Get a run. Four going through here, Aaron. Six in, four through. So there's Karumban. Comfortably through there. Looks like behind them in alley one, Marucci door dropping down. Comfortable as well, getting through to the next round. So getting a shot here. Those two crews are going to get in, mate. I think I just saw Coffs Harbour in a bit of trouble there. I think North Cronulla are in there. You see there. And at the back, there's Mermaid. North Cronulla. Might be North Cronulla. Uh, sorry, Coffs and uh, Coogee there yeah. to miss out, sadly. North Cronulla looking good once again. Up at the front of the action. So Coffs Harbour and Coogee are going to be the ones pending confirmation of the results that they're going to miss out of the action here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships here at Alexander Headlands. All thanks. Very good. To our friends and partners here of this event. We're going through them as we can. Finns, swimmer, the quality trusted brand of the beach. Finns have been supporting Surf Life Saving for over 20 years. Finns, the quality performance swimmer brand, 100% Australian made. And a couple of other iconic brands, Kellogg's Nutrigrain, Fuel the Energy, with the protein, fibre and energy, proud supporters of these Aussies. And Ampol, one of Surf Life Saving Australia's major national partners and continue to power local Surf Life Saving clubs. So Ampol has brought back the IB competition for another year when a brand new IB hold to help deliver essential services and protect your community with this vital equipment. And mate, we're all Surf Life Savers. We all do our bit and that's so great to see that we're all patrolling our beaches and doing our bit for the community. Uh, we can't do it without the sponsors either, Aaron. They're, uh, they're generous, and, and as we're all volunteers, we do appreciate their support. Moving in now, out to sea, we've got some girls in here now. Is that back to the... Let's have a look at this draw. For the reserve female. Reserve female. Final, number one, Avalon Beach Chaos. Number two, Morty Alec Mojo. Alley three, North Cronulla Diamonds. Then they'll have that gap in the alleys and move over to the Madams of Maruchidor. Lawn Prawns in five. And Palm Beach once again. The Pterodactyls in six. Working in trios again. Morty Alec, Matt Mulcahy. Sweeping there, of course, on the bay there. Not many clubs continuing surf boats at the, Mel the moment in Melbourne. You've got Williamstown and Morty Alec. They're really the only two in the metropolitan Melbourne area. The rest are along the Great Ocean Road and further down to the west of Victoria. So... Continuing to uh, represent Victoria. Not many big crews left. Lawn Prawns are definitely ones to watch too. And on the left-hand side definitely. of Boca Beach Chaos. Well, you've got the Queensland State Champions in Alley 4, the Maruchidor Madams. They had a tough time of it getting through, but they survived the big surf and have got through to today and performing well. Young Taylor Fox, shout out to her. She's a little cousin of mine and her mates. They're doing very well there, but... You've also got the Palm Beach crew in Alley 6. They got third in New South Wales State Final recently. And North Cronulla Diamonds were fifth in that state, same state final. So there's some hot crews in this race. As you said, Lawn never put a disappointing crew out there. They're going to be hard to beat. No, they don't. They've had a really, really strong three, four, five years with Jeff Matthews. Also, Pat Spinozola has made a couple of ASRL Open Finals. Jackson McCaffrey made an ASRL Open Final this year with the Stars as well. So Lawn had two... Two crews in the reserve female final at the ASL Open. They've also got the Lawn Edge, Lawn Off Shotguns. So a strong history of recent times for Lawn. As we get to the pointy end of the day, finals running down today. Well, they, they've, they've got 10 minutes up their sleeve at the moment. That's where they're at. Mm, wow, <laughs> okay. So it's a little touch bit of, and go. It is touch and go, but they're working through it. You can see alley number four, mate. What's going on there? So that was, uh, I reckon they're off the blue can. That was the alley I had in. There's a massive hole just to their left, and you've got to push up onto that sandbank. And it is uh, quite deep there for the girls. Those other crews on the right hand side will have to shift over to their right a little, give Marucci Door a bit of space. But that's that gap, that, mip, that hole in the middle. Sometimes that can work to your advantage if you can get in and away on that deep water off the beach. It can help you out to sea, but at the same time, coming back through that hole can slow your progress in a bit of dead water. But they look all pretty even. The check starters are both happy now. Still working in the trio. Threes and threes. Let's see what happens here. Fan belt, get that flag up. Get these crews ready to go here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. Collaroy just dropped the legs there so everyone can see the start. It's a gentle breeze there. You see his flag. It's just a little southerly. It was stiff earlier, but now it's just eased off a bit. 
Conditions are quite smooth out there than they were earlier today, but there'll be plenty of nerves out here, Aaron. Semi-final in Australian surf boats. And, mate, it is absolutely pissing it. <laughs> Look at the rain at the moment, mate. It's just not letting up. I think it stopped for about an hour, but that second front's just hit. But as you can see, the wind's probably dropped five or ten knots. Yeah. And smooth, the rain smoothed that out, made it a little glassy. Geez, they are starting a long way out on that bank. The starter has... There they go. He's pulled them. See a couple struggling to get in there. Yeah, North Canelo in three, not the best. There's a couple in front of Ali, four, five, and six to negotiate, punching through that. You see the noses up and down. Ali one, Avalon. Ooh, oh, Ali five and six Woo! get belted. You see in the middle there, North Canelo, is it? Nah, left-hand sides of, of Avalon Beach, and you got Morty Alec and North Canelo. So they're the three there. Then the three on the other side, Maruchido, Madams, Lawn Prawns and Palm Beach. So it's a left-hand side, Avalon Beach, Chaos. That'll be Nath Wellings there, off and gone. Right next to them, North Cronulla too. And in the middle there, trying to get a top four spot. Morty Alec Mojos, they make their way out to sea, mate. But look at the tide sucking out. There's still another hour to go. It's pretty shallow on that bank there, and you see the girls working hard. Going for his pump there, I think, in possibly the lawn crew. It would be. They got hit pretty hard. I think the ones that got hit the hardest were Palm Beach on the right-hand side. And just to note, if you are watching on Facebook, I know there's been a few comments, the YouTube is up and running again. So if you want to whack it on your TVs for the afternoon, YouTube's up and running again. There's been a few comments. So great work from our production team doing everything they can in the conditions that we have. Phil was saying before, no drone today due to a range of factors. The weather's been one. And uh, we're doing our best here to get into it. So we just got confirmation from our uh, co-producer in the back there, Donnie Cottrell, that when this rain settles, they're going to try and get the drone up. See them going into that turn there. There's three left-handed sweeps in this race. There's Nathan Wellings in Alley 1 and the Morty Alex sweep and also Brooksy in Maruchidor. Yeah. So Matty Mulcahy, mate, there from Morty Alec. Avalon around clear first, and they're up and about, and they're getting out of that can. You see Lawn there with Maruchidor, Madams working hard. The Madams on the left, Lawn on the right. Of course, Lawn had a fantastic campaign. They actually won the ASL Open there on their home beach in a really exciting finish. They're going to want to continue their remarkable season here. Let's see what happens over the next 20 strokes because they'll start to hit the gates and that's when the waves will come. This is when it really counts now. Sweeps will be barking at their rowers. For some of these crews, they've got 40 strokes left in the season. If they can make it a good 40, they'll squeeze through to the next race, you see. Avalon there, looking for a runner. Nothing behind them, but there's a couple building as they get closer to the wave zone. Yeah, there definitely is, and the crew that needs to do the work, I think of the two on the right-hand side, Lawn Prawns and Palm Beach got smacked on the way out. You can see that shot, so it's left-hand side, Avalon looking good. Maruccio and Adams have had a great season. They're going to get through at this stage, but the waves are starting yeah, to come, there. mate. Yeah, there's a run from Maruccio, and Lawn's chasing the same run, and I reckon Palm Beach there, there they are. This is going to be anything on this finish line. You see both these crews will pick this up, but Maruchidor are a wave ahead of these two boats. Yeah, they're good, mate. They're good. Avalon's safe there in first, I'd suggest. Wait for the official results. Top four are going to make it through to the top eight of reserve female. You can see that I reckon the four crews going from third to six are on the same wave, so we're going to have to see who got the better line. We'll await confirmation. We see pan across to the right. Yeah, it's going to be really tight between... Morty Alec Mojo, North Cronulla Diamonds, Lawn Prawns and Palm Beach. Two of those will get through. And it's fair to say, Avalon Beach and Marichidor have made the top eight. Talabudra on screen, the Bandits. Donnie Cottrell there. Tally Bandits. Of course, what a story they are. They are from Emu Park. Of course, we follow them on the socials. I was actually looking at their Instagram last night. Right. You turn over, you turn Bandits. all the stones over, Aaron. Bandits underscore Emi Park underscore Talabudra. Just can't make it up with their mind, do they? Just want to share the love. Got a foot in a few camps. And good luck to them there. The people at Tally are very friendly and it's a great club. Good people down there. So I'm sure they're being well received and well representing the Tally Club. In Alley 2, South Curl 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 Curl. Gus Batiri sweeping those girls. They've had a great season. They got second at the New South Wales State to the Batemans Bay Banshees, who sadly aren't here today. One of their rowers got 
hurt, I believe some broken ribs on uh, Thursday, Neil Innes crew. So uh, you see South Kirkko, probably the strongest crew in New South Wales as far as results go at state. Allura also in that state final, I believe. It's a bit of a spread across, uh, across Australia here. You've got a couple from Queensland, a couple from Sydney, one from South Australia. So Finale six. South Kirkko, the silver medal at the stage. You mentioned Allura. Wilco in this one made the final with a sixth place. So a couple of state, team, a state champion finalists here in this one heat. Two semi-final number one in the reserve female. Once again, working in two groups of three. Four to go through. And who's got the better run of the track down the straight? Well, you say there's always a bit of luck involved in this sport, and it literally is because if you get hit square on the nose, you lose a length, that it can be hard to row down at this pointy end of the competition. All these crews are pretty fast now. Just need to get away quick and clean. South Kirkall's had a great start to their carnival. So once again, Talabudra on the left, South Kirkall, Kilkill, Kurum and Concords, then the gap to Wilco. It's quite tight there, Aaron. You see that gap? Bowbirds in five. And Glenelg, Greg Dorr sweeping there, dragged out of retirement to once again give it a crack, and he's in the top 12 from Glenelg in SA in alley number six. They're working tight. you got that hole. Have about 30 or so metres wide that they're just avoiding. A couple of lines coming through here. The starters just waiting. Deep start too. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, as the water comes onto this bank with this set. Of course, join us on the comments on the live stream. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're going for. As we get into the finals time. Coming up next is the quarterfinals for the females of the Opens after this race so quarterfinals for the opens as they're away not the greatest start for Talabudra in alley number one South Kirkall on the screen on the right hand side the wave breaks just in front of them they'll get over cleanly there's one more to navigate but they're looking good here Talabudra in filthy water yeah they got a real bouncy start underneath the boat there and you see Kirkall in alley two have got oh. away and then up in alley six Glenelg so Glenelg and Allura there, the work to do early. Noosa there, probably leading the pack out of those three on the right-hand side. But again, left-hand side, alleys two and three, South Kirkko, Corumban, two prolific clubs in the surf boat world, off and gone in first and second. Yeah, rating out to sea now. We've got a clock on this race. See how long these girls are taking to get out to the turning cans, going through the gate cans now. Trying to stay high on their turning can with the wind pushing from right to left. Look at that curl curl timing. That is sharp. Gus is a very competent sweep. A couple of those young ladies have won gold in the past in junior divisions and potentially under 23s, I think. So well and truly accomplished crew there. Correct. You've nailed it exactly right. A couple of familiar faces in that crew. So four are going to make it through. Two are going to drop off into the Bodie Bar on the top of the hill. So we've got South Kirkall just in front. Moving up again into it is Tally. They're not too far off the pace. Kurumban up there in alley number three in second. The crews have got the work to do from this shot at the moment are Allura, Wilco and Glenelg who got hit. And that was about a minute 35 to that turning can on the way out to sea. So it's a shorter race now with the tide going out. Good turn from Kurumban. Good turn from South Kirkall. And these probably your two leaders here. It's time to leave nothing in the tank for some of these crews as they want to avoid elimination. Glenelga making the turn on the right-hand side. They've got the work to do. Allura Wilco a length or so off. Noosa probably there, as you can see on screen, in about fifth or fourth spot, sorry. Allura's making a move, though, right up next to them. So we're going to see the wave zone shortly, but it's still left to right, mate, probably favouring the top three left-hand side. Yeah, and you see now Curly just trying to milk every little bit of assistance. These crews... In alley two, three, and four, hoping for a runner. Or three, four, and five, sorry. You see the field there. Alley one just out of shot. See, there's South Curl Curl coming through the cans. Wilco's made some ground up in alley four. They're coming up to the back of Corumban. I'm making the call. There's a wave probably 30 metres behind Allura. If they don't get this one, there might be another one, but they'll need to get down in front of this. 
Noose has dropped off, so Alou's gone past Noose. So the crews that need to do the work are Ali's one and six, Talabudra and Glenelg. There's one under Glenelg on the right hand side. There's definitely one under Glenelg, but it goes under him. So the top four, Phil Stevano, might be looking pretty set. Well, there's Gus and his girls from Curl Curl. Noosa struggling. Here comes Tally to come at Noosa. This will be Ali one and four. Who's going to get it? They're on the same wave. Gee, not wrong. Just out of shot there. It's a dog fight here. Noosa trying to get to the line. I think Noosa might have got there looking at that shot. Yeah, I think you've called it right. So awaiting confirmation of the results. We'll soon find out who's got through. South Kirkhill is safe with Corumban. Allura Wilco turned fifth, came home strong. Great man of the sea, Wilco. And just a bit of a shout out to Glenelg as well. Top 12 reserve female, their campaign is going to be over, but a wonderful great, stint. Yeah, great effort from the team from Glenelg. So we're moving through this program now. And of course we are here thanks to Surf Life Saving Australia with plenty of action on and off the beach today. Don't forget to head up to the Festival Zone at Pierce Park or if you are in this boaty area, you've got the Alex Surf Club with a perfect view. How, the... how good is that beer garden, Aaron? <laughs> we'll, try, <laughs> we'll try it out very soon, I think. possibly one of the better beer gardens for surf boat racing I've ever seen. Yeah, head up there. Event presentations will be happening up there. There's a big screen with the live stream action and of course... There's the Glenelg team. I didn't die wondering. Got hit on the way out. You got Alex, Sticks, Nat, Georgia Sumner back in the boat after a couple of years off. Greg Dor sweeping there. And as you've seen in Alex Six, it just takes one bump on the nose and just puts you off pace and out of rhythm, fills your boat up. You've got to empty it out, get it up and moving. As we're just going to go to a bit of a replay of the final moments there in reserve female semi-final number one here. Oh, sorry, apologies, semi-final number two as we go to the replay there. So you can see we're looking at the boat speed. South Curl Curl leading the way. So they're ones to watch. Karamba, never discount them in the middle of the screen. Wilco, look at that one. He just dialed that little one there. And that, snuck through. That's all you need to do. Right-hand side, Glenelg are the ones... Who will miss out? But we're still awaiting confirmation. So left-hand side, you'll see that Talabudra came right up to Noosa, and we're still waiting now. To our eye, Noosa probably looked that length in front, if not half a length, but we're just not too sure where the finish line is from here. we just got to wait and see. Looked like there was deeper water in Alley 1 as well, so we'll wait for those results from the officials. Looks like we're moving into the open women now. Wilkio, he's always at the top of the finish. He's always around the top six or eight. He's done it again. We're moving into the Open Women quarterfinals, I believe. And we've got Avoca Beach Zenith in Alley 1. Bulleye Gold, the New South Wales State Champs in Alley 2. Lawn Edge in Alley 3. And there's my girls, the North Narrabeen Golden Girls, Donnie McManus. Oh, wow, the great man. I've just got from a few stats on Don McManus, the mentor. He's won nine Australian gold medals running through those it's quite a list remarkable stuff lord edge fifth place at the asrl open this year we'll see who else we got bull eye gold have had a pretty good season new south wales state champions that's nothing to sneeze at at all a couple of those girls old mates from way back at uh uh south coast cruise slipped my mind samuel park perhaps helensburg from back in the junior days and uh, they've come back together under Jonesy, Paul Jones. Avoca Beach, Zenith there, Richard Bridey there on screen. Of course, they made the final at New South Wales State as well, so they've all got form. Now they're working in pairs with that hole in the middle, left-hand side. you got Avoca Beach and Bulleye, right-hand side, Lawn and also North Narrabeen Golden Girls. Two left-handed sweeps on the right uh, left-hand side of the course and two right-handed sweeps on the uh, uh, right-hand side. And it's fair to say all these sweeps are very accomplished and capable sweeps now. As we see Evoca going in, Richard pushing it along, jumping on the tuck and off they go. Little bouncing to get through. You see Lawn probably got the, oh, Alley 1 and 2 got a boat full, powering through it, but just enough to check them. Pumps are humming now. Evoca still working hard. Bulleye. 
Much like their men's crew, they're just out of the blocks and away, sharp. Yeah, they are. And you would have noticed he called it. Lawn Edge straight out as well. They got the best run. The two crews on the left got hit. So dropping one here. So three going to get through. We're going from 12. Uh, sorry, we're going from 16 to 12 here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Championship. So we're going to be dropping one from these next four races. At the moment, it's still fo focusing on Bulleye. They're off there with that evoker and it's probably north narrow being on the right hand side just a little bit off but not too far uh, away they're hanging in there the girls they've gotten better throughout the day laney alicia lindsay and carla with don at the back been together for some time the girls and they're a good bunch of ladies and they're having a crack here and i don't think they're too far off the pace aaron to look looking at this screen but we'll see as they get into the cans it's a pretty even race here of one and two just getting hit, so they had a bit more work to do, but yeah, we we'll see here. Bull, Bull, Bulleye pushed through, mate, so they're probably just right up there. Lawn Edge, you mentioned them making the ASL Open final as well. Lawn Edge, a prolific name in women's uh, open women's rowing for quite some time. And they're turning a length in front of North Narrabeen, right next to them, making the turn also, which they already have done so. Are the crews and alleys one and two. Evoca Beach Zenith, Bulleye Gold. So they're making their way in now. It's going to be nice and tight. One misses out. We'll see what happens at the gate cans. We'll see what these runners produce for the girls. There's one for Bulleye now and Lawn. Milking it on the top. Ray comes up. Then they're off the back again. Big legs now. Another one just ready to go for Lawn here. Loading up. So you can see left to right of Oka Beach, Bulleye, Lawn Edge. Uh, the three we're focusing on the screen there. You can see that the uh, bout is dipped Bulleye. down. Bulleye, the ones that are going to sit on top. Now, there's another one behind. I'm not too sure that they're going to be able to get it. But North Narrabeen's got a little bubble on us, so they're not out of the hunt yet up in Alley 4. So these three crews are going to miss this one, but the next wave is the one that might bring them all together. Bulleye Gold might prove me wrong, though, and get this one. Let's see how they go, Phil. It's starting to hollow out for them perfectly, and they've rode strongly, and they're going to get over that. That's how you do it. Have a breather. Get set for your next race. It's a good feeling. Well, he's caught. He's not sure if they're going to get down. They're still sitting on top, but they're safe now. Great work. Left-hand side, Evoca. Can they get down this one? Evoca Beach. Late takeoff. They're going to drop off the back, so that's going to bring North Narrabeen right up. And Evoca oh. Beach, one right behind Evoca wow. Beach too, mate. Let's see what happens here. He goes down with the shoot of the wave. Can Evoca Beach hold it? Richard Bright, he's trying to pull it oh, back. Narrabeen and Evoca. Yeah. Wow, two of the better sweeps on the beach. Their girls both in a photo, I reckon, for that final place. There's the New South Wales state champions taking care of business. As while we wait, let's get through the results from the reserve females. So in semi-final number one, Avalon Beach, Chaos got in with Morty Alec Mojo continuing on, Marichidor and Lawn Prawn. So the ones who missed out were North Cronulla Diamonds and Palm Beach. In semi-final, minor semi-final, heat number two. Talabudra were the ones that missed out with Glenelg, as we kind of saw on the screen. But for now, we're going to go down to Tash, who's got someone on the water's edge. OK, yeah, I'm down here with Georgia from Bulleye Gold in the open females. Um, that was a great little wave there. You had a good chase. A couple of runners you dropped off, but uh, the hard work paid through. Yeah, we were really happy with that. Um, first race where we've kind of put it together. The first couple of races, we've had some shoddy starts. So, yeah good runners out there and we just chased it hard so yeah happy with that all righty well good luck for the rest of the racing well done yeah thank you what a season they've had new south wales state champs and they're continuing to get it done at the australian surf life saving championships quarter final number two field currumbin cockatoos newport thunder currumbin hunters south kill kill shakers four in one will miss out and we'll get you the result between north narrabeen and evoca beach zenith as soon as we have it oh Open women's quarterfinal two. Top 16 in the country. Corumban team, believe it's the Australian team. Represented Australia this year. Newport Thunder, famous A crew from Newport with Michael King on the back. Corumban Hunters in Alley 3. And then see Gus Materi again with the Shakers. They had a little shake up from their last year's Shaker crew, but they're still through here up in Alley 4. Waiting patiently for the starters. Both check starters are happy. 
Just awaiting a result from the previous with this updating our app. And as soon as it comes through, we'll let you know. Fan belt once again, get that flag up, get these crews going. Well, it's a different ocean out there today to the last few days, Aaron, isn't it? Oh, mate. How I mean, was it? We don't have to ask our good friend here, Don Cottrell. I've, he, a, uh, I've asked him. Oh, mate, that was hard to take. I was, I got a no I was down on the beach and it was... That 220s division was something to behold. There was 21 of the most maddest 60-year-old blokes you've ever seen. And sadly, uh, Mother Nature took care of several of them. Don's crew, one of the standout crews in that division, but didn't feature. So we, uh, we're looking at his surf boats. We do like the waves. Commiserations to the tally cab savs on that one. So what we got here is the open female top 16. We're going to get them down to the top 12. Coming up next will be the same for the open males. And then we're going to be going on to the reserve male and female once again. So if you're following the resis, don't go too far away. Incredible scenes here in what is tough conditions here with this wind continuing to cause havoc. The rain is on and off. We've got, I just got some advice. We've got the Queensland first and second place getters in the Corumban teams, with one of them being the current Australian champions in the current Australian team, the Cockatoos. So they're away now. In they go. So you see. Chucky in there now, a little one on the nose, trying to dabble through those two. Probably Alley 1 caught the worst of it. And a flyer down in Alley 4. They've got a little jet stream up that end, so they're away in probably a length in front, the South Curly Shakers. And there's a little one to get over for Corumban. Just dropping over the front of that and out to sea now. Rates up. So a crew that's got off away nicely. Newport Thunder in alley number two. You can see the right-hand side of the screen matching it right up with those two crews from Corumban and also South Kirkhill. Once again, we, we keep repeating the name, but they're continuing to be here all day, South Kirkhill. And they're the ones that are probably a length off at the moment on the right-hand side there. They've got the work to do, making their way out to sea. Yeah, strong club, South Curly, as a Corumban. A lot of these... Clubs have multiple crews, train hard together, great racing partners are training. And when you're racing against the best in Australia as training partners, it can only bode well for you, pushing you each other along. You see there, North uh, said Newport with Kingy. Probably a slight lead as they head out towards the cans. He looks like he's on the blue can. And we see the Shakers in Alley 4 and the Karaman Hunters there. The yellow can probably see the full field, but they're around in two strokes and then up and out of it. Still awaiting confirmation between Avoca Beach and North Narrabeen from the previous quarterfinal here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. Left to right, you can see the cockatoos. Great row. Right up there, equal first with the other crew from Crum and the Hunters. It's Newport that is still in that top three. South Kirkhill mowing them down with every stroke. You can see on the right, they're not out of it yet. Never discount them. This is going to be bloody interesting at the gate cans for sure, Phil. What a row from the Cockatoos. They were a length or two out of it off the start. They rode back up to the field. But none of these crews are going away now. And there's Kingy on a run over Newport coming through the gate cans. Karam and Cockatoos in Alley 1 also a little run there. And they've probably worked their way back up towards the front of the field. But down towards Alley 4, there's a little runner for South Curley. And here's a wave if they all play their cards right. Yeah, I don't know if they'll get this one. It'll even them out. It'll sit on top. Let's Karumman's see. trying. There's one right behind Karumman on the right-hand side. South Curley's milking it still. Look, look, look behind, mate. It's Woo! fattening up for them beautifully. This is going to be close. This will be on the finish line. They've had to stop to be in the best position. It's going to be a late takeoff up that end. It's going to be hard to hold. We see here. Trailed him. He had to, I think. They were so late. This. We'll see which slingshot gets out in front. Oh, they are. Look at this. Wow. I'm, I'm going right-hand side safe. I reckon Karumban and South Kirkhill are good. I think the ones that are in trouble are Alley's one or two. Wow. That's the current Australian 
champions, the current Australian rep teams, the wait for the judges. The Cockatoos and Newport Thunder right on it at the moment. We'll wait to see what happens there, but that's one of the more exciting finishes we've seen here today at the Aussies. Yeah, he's not too sure there. Possibly the first comeback of the day too. I've been watching closely. Comebacks were the order of the day on the bigger waves early in the I've, week. I've had a Stephen Bradby list in my head, mate, and I haven't had to mark anyone down on it yet. It's yeah. been... <laughs> it's been... Yeah. That... One, uh, of those, one of those things with these conditions, you do want your rowers in the seats if you can help it and punch it across the line, up and rowing. But at the same time, you definitely need to try and keep the boat straight. And that wave came behind Spateri, filled right up on him. Well, we're we'll getting the results from the first quarter final. As we read them through. Gold, gold with a bull eye gold. First place, second place, Lawn Edge. Third place, Avoca Beach Zenith. Richard Bride gets it done, and unfortunately, Donnie McManus has missed out by Bees. You know what? North Narrabeen Golden Girls made unfortunate for them, but great campaign. Bees Willica. So, poor Kembler here. North Cronulla. Jack Patterson and Funky. So the next result we want to wait for is between, I would think, Newport Thunder and Crumb and Cockatoos. There's going to be some very nervous rollers and sweeps for the next couple of minutes as they wait on those results to see who's going to miss out and who's going to progress. Yeah, they'll be up in the video. It's great having the video here, though. Sorts out, sorts out their results fair and square. We go to a replay here now. Let's look left. Uh, sorry, right hand side. Now you see him trail. It was a late takeoff, but just watch Phil the right hand side. They probably get half a length in front. They just had the better run in the deeper water. It's between alleys one and two for third, I reckon. There, mate. Look at that. They're just going nowhere, stuck. Oh, spinning the wheels. And the hard thing Don is, say. we didn't exactly know where the finish line was. Looking at the screen here, North Cronulla Funkies. It's a good comeback by the South Curly team. The Bowman shot straight up the front, which kept that boat level the whole way and gave it momentum forward. So, Port Kembler OGs there on the right hand side as they get ready, guns up. Coogee DMGs and the Pirates from Palm Beach are on the right hand side out of screen as away they go. All clean start. In and away, little ripples to get over here for Port Kembler. Patterson punching through a little one. There's more coming. Oh, he's copped off a boat full there. It's not going to trouble them too badly, but did put him back by half a length, I reckon. And probably up in alley one, the North Cronulla Funkies. have got the early lead. So you got North Cronulla there on the left, leading the way from, I'd say, Coogee, and then Palm Beach, and Port Kembler, who, who got hit on the way out, just a half a length, a length behind those North Cronulla team. Still awaiting confirmation of the result. We'll get it to you as soon as it comes through from the previous, but left-hand side, North Cronulla, funky, say see you later to Port Kembler. Could you DMGs, Palm Beach Pirates on the right-hand side? So on screen, it's probably the two in the middle, Port Kembler just off the DMGs, and the others on the outside lanes off and gone. Off and gone. I don't know if there's a favourable end up in here today, Aaron, from what I'm watching. It's just a bit of pot luck. What happens? Pot luck in surf boats? Never, surely. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, you see there the funkies. Steady boat out to sea, pushing through. And the poor Kembler team with Jack Patterson on the back, trying to work back up into this race. We'll see as they go into the cans. The funky, the get funkies crew here. North Cronulla into that turn. One, oh. two, and they're away on three. Yes. Yeah, Jesus, only hit that, that one tight. <laughs> oh, I thought he was in stride. Nervous. He was probably oh. nervous. One of the girls paused for a split second there. Oh, my God. But they're up and around, and then Paul Kembler, you see there, length out of it to North Cronulla. So still the outsides, alleys one and four are the ones that are ahead at the moment. Still Good run for Palm Beach in four, though, as we look there. They're milking this one. That's Coxie there. And right next to them, Coogee DMGs will get a lift out of this. Even if it's for three or four strokes, that'll get them right back up into it. Sending it along oh, across the top. Oh, this is going to be close, Aaron. Absolutely. One's going to drop here. It's still North Canella Funkies that are looking delicious at the moment at the front. 
hitting the gate can now, probably two lengths in front of second place, but it's not over yet. We're going to see some waves, or I can just pass the turning can. Yeah, so they can milk this one. Funky steers the ship. Couple of waves coming. He's going to miss this one. Spatten Let's see what up. happens here. Port Kembla next to them. They're going to try and get down this. They won't, but now look at the lift, the rating lift for North Canala. Right hand side Kuji to Palm a little Beach. Wave too. Kuji in the middle here. Wow, if they get over this, this could be home and host for the Kuji girls. Working across the top. Just can't drop down that one. That's brought Port Kembla back into this on the finish line. Looks like North Canala in alley one are going to be safe. Port Kembla. The rest of them. Port Kembla, late takeoff, late takeoff, they needed it, they're going to get it, so they're going to come up right next to Coogee in Palm Beach, North Canella, Funky's on the left of home, mate, but once again, it's going to be tight, you think, finish. you think Palm Beach are through, and I would have been leading towards Port Kembla in front of Coogee DMGs, but yet, once again, another tight finish, our amazing team in the production booth next to us will get a replay shortly, but it was definitely Palm Beach in second, I reckon from that angle, North Canella, Funky's with the win, Epic stuff. Congratulations to everyone involved. It's starting to get exciting here at the Aussies. Coogee, DMG's on screen. And just confirmation from the previous quarterfinal heat, number two, South Kirkill Shakers won it. Kurumban Hunters second. Kurumban Cockatoos have pipped Newport Thunder. So there you go. Wow. It's all happening now. As we just seen the Port Kembla team. Jack Patterson's wife in that team, they were the New South Wales team. She was the captain. And what have, have they done enough to get through here? Coming across the top of this one with all the momentum. They had to work hard to row down that one. It was no guarantee. And that would have decided them staying or going today. You see they're up rowing as soon as that boat hit the sand and then, well, a long way from the finish line here, Aaron. And like you said, it is hard to know, but I think could you in trouble. But congratulations. North Canala Funkies, semi-statement made there, just uh, reminding everyone what they are capable of doing. And we're getting into the next race here. This will be the last quarter final here for the Open Females. Malulaba Chopsui in one. The Krakens from Wulgulga in two. Surface Paradise Spice in three. Marichidor Chums in four. Three Queenslanders here. Marucci Door Chums on the right. Surface Paradise Spice. And uh, Malulaba Chop Suey in one, mate. Well, with the Malulaba Chop Suey, glad you mentioned those. Sarah Weston in that team has won five open female gold medals herself. Her husband is the sweep, Brendan. And that's a family affair in that boat. So they're always going to feature with the stock of quality or the quality of stock in that boat. We know what they're capable of. of Sixth place at the ASRL Open this year. A reminder of just how good they are making a final there. Marucci Door Chums as well. Don't discount what they're capable of. Silver medalists at the Aussies here last year over in Perth. So Megsy knows how to get a crew to deliver the best. And let's talk about Surface Paradise, mate, because we've seen what they've done over the last two years and they just continue to grow. Is that our friend Hughes on the back of that one? It would definitely would be the Spice. That's of course. Good He's a good man, Hughes. And, uh, well, it's great to see the Wulgulga team here, a country club in all the New South Wales, mid-north coast. And they're away now. Little one on the bow of the boats in Alley 1. You see Alley 4 and 3 and 4 having to get through one. Wulgulga, little one on the nose, but they're going to pop over that. And you say they're all out to sea now. Malula Bar there. Got the rating up nice and high and the Maruchi Door Chums really rating it up there to get away. So probably Ali 1 and 4, the early lead, with Wulgulga getting a little bit of choppy water. And... Wulgulga, mate, Rachel, Megan, Belinda, Catherine, with their sweep, Timothy White. So another Krakens, there you go. So they're the ones with a little bit of work to do, along with Surface Paradise. Once again, it's Ali's 1 and 4 that we're seeing, just with that length or so lead. Right up there to Surface Paradise. We'll Google the crew at the moment with the work to do here, dropping one. See Michael Brooks in Alley 4. He was busy earlier. Picked up a silver medal, I think, in the Colts. Great achievement with the Maruchidor Force. But you see out to see there's Malulabar team with Sarah Weston. The Weston family. There they are. Great control of that boat. 
No panic. You see how bumpy it is all the way out to sea, Aaron, as they start to turn the nose into the can. You have to have your wits about you for clean blades today because little chops or catching chops with your blade can just unsettle the run and slow you down. Yeah, and conditions are going to change shortly because we've just hit low tide, so we're going to see the surge of water coming in with the high tide. But let's focus on this race at the moment. Malulabar on the left-hand side. It's Mulgulga there on their left, our right, that have the work to do as they make the turn. But let's see what happens on the way in. This is the quarterfinals of the Open Female, the last one. And coming up next, quarterfinal one, the Open Male. Good boy. So we're looking here. You see Hugel's got back into this one. He's on a runner up there, but here he is. Surface Paradise team. Steady ship. Another little run building for Hughes at the back of the Surface Paradise ladies. And there's a run in alley one from the Bar. And something building for the Maruchidor team. So we'll Gorga here. They'll need a wave to come through this or a, catastro a ca catastrophic event in front of them to get through because they've dropped the pace now and oh, it's tough going in open opens Aaron there's one at the cans now but we'll have to see what happens over the next five or six strokes for the rest of the crews they might even have one under them now but Tim White's got to bark orders for Wulgurga because they've got to make something happen now Malula bars looking good on the left right hand side the charms once again are looking good to make it through to the next round and along with them as we're looking at Malulabar there, a surface paradise are going Powerful to get through. Powerful row in alley one, Malulabar over the top of that little bubble. Brendan Weston there leaning on it just to keep that nose straight. But that's nice and comfortably through. We'll wait for the official judges, but there it is. One, two and three, we'd say. All getting through to the major semi for second. Second Qu quarter. Quarterfinals here coming up. Quarterfinal number one in the open men. Of course, we are here, thanks. To Surf Life Saving Australia. Stay updated with all of the Aussies action via the Surf Life Saving Australia social media channels. Follow Surf Life Saving Australia on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter for all of your Aussies action. Make sure to visit the hub while you're up here and remember when you're posting to use Aussies 2024 on your pictures and stay up to date with all of the Aussies action on Surf Life Saving Australia at SLS Australia as uh, Phil Stevano jumps out and he's had the great Aussies once again, it's good to see him getting on the mic. On screen here, Fairhaven, Angry Otters, Matt Silker there sweeping. The Baker boys, Tom Skidmore in there, of course, from the Great Ocean Road. The neighbouring club, Toulon, where the ASRL Open was last year. Oh, sorry, last year, a couple of months ago. As we're moving on to quarterfinal number one for the men. So we've got 20 here. 16 are going to get through, so five in dropping one. Couple of the lads there on screen. Will Gulga there packing up the boat. Great campaign to see they're making it through to this stage. So five in the next race. Look how great it is. You can see Maruchidori in the background where the ocean events are. Matt Silka there, who we've mentioned. This will be his last carnival with Fairhaven. His last carnival in a Victorian cap because he has moved up to Brisbane. So get the checkbooks out. Arrange a meeting with your agents to get him at your club. Isn't that right, Donnie? Absolutely. He's a popular man, great coach. I've already offered him a set of cleavers at Tullabudra. Don't you worry about that. As they push into the water now, and thanks to Phil Stevano for jumping in for me. He's at the North Narrabeen Club these days. I'm calling him Jesus because he's being mentored by God. <laughs> <laughs> Savano, like a big sponge, Donnie McManus teaching him all the tricks. It can only be a good thing. I'm going to reel off a couple of these crews for you, mate. Prolific names in surfboat rowing. Fairhaven Angry Otters in one, but here's the next couple of South Kirkwood. Death Riders in two, and the Barbarians from Kurumban in three. Yeah, South Kirkwood Death Riders, gold medalists here in 2016, if my memory serves me correct. I'll go back in the history books and just have a look at that one. Coffs Harbour in alley number four and Collaroy gnomes in five so they're only dropping one here yeah five in four to go through i'm sure these crews are enjoying the soft cuts as long as we don't run out of time oh, today yeah. absolutely emma valentine commenting keen for the avalon chaos who we saw earlier on today progress into the rounds as we're looking at the comments coming through yeah, the Avalon, plenty of love for them. 
Tommy Cross, well done, Lawn Edge, of course, representing the Big V. That's what we do. We get around it as a state of Victoria now. Anyone we're going to support. Go Bulleye, of course, from Brook. Morty Alec, comments for them. So keep them coming through. Let us know where you're watching from. On screen there, the three crews on the left. And just for something different, we've got three on the right, working in a trio. Make that 2021 for the South Curly crew. They were the victors here in pretty flat conditions. They had an absolute cracking carnival, did South Curly as a club in 2021. course continuing to thank some of our supporters the Azusa Youth Australia are proud to partner with Surf Life Saving Australia of course the Azusa D-Max and MUX have everything you need to go your own way on your next adventure great deals are available for clubbies so stop by the Azusa Youth Stand to learn more on camera there now we have Matt Collins over on your right hand side from Coffs Harbour on your far right is Collaroy Gnomes. Fairhaven on the left. South Curl Curl in the centre. Corumban Barbarians. Swept by Glenn Williams in Alley 3. A few swells coming here. Not sure if they're going to pull the trigger right now. We have gone past the bottom of the tide. Tide starting to come back in now. Wind appears to have picked back up slightly, and away they go. Nice clean jump over the gunnels there by the Fairhaven crew. And all of these crews, away they go. Collaroy probably just not getting the best of the jump down there in Alley 5. On screen there now is Fairhaven. Great start. Look at the rating. Nice and strong. So they're only dropping one. So you look on the right-hand side, that's a crew from Coffs Harbour who have actually shot out like a cannon. Yeah, absolutely. Matt Collins doing good things up there, formerly at Monaval, the rude man himself. And he is doing good things up there in Coffs Harbour with that club. They've got a pretty strong reserve-grade crew as well. They've already taken out one of the Masters medals. I don't think Matt would mind me saying he would back himself. He's a fairly confident guy. No, surely not. Has an opinion and is not scared to share it with you either. Making their way out to sea, dropping one. Collaroy Gnomes on the right-hand side, probably level pegging with Corumban Barbarians that are just off. Those two leaders, we would be saying, the Death Riders and the Schwackers from Coffs Harbour. Left-hand side, Fairhaven. Victorian state team representatives, Victorian state team champs. Making their way into the cans now, and I think we're going to see four boats just about go around all at the one time. It will only be the Collaroy crew not turning simultaneously with the rest, and around they go. Have a look at that. Rob Larry again. We see that particular turn that he does. Leans back over the back of the tuck, lifts the bow of the boat out. Fairhaven, they've gone around as well, but we've got all four boats there. Fairhaven, South Curly, Corumban, and Coffs Harbour with only Collaroy looking for a miracle here at this stage. And I don't think this ocean is throwing up too many of them today. It certainly was earlier on in the week. You could just about crack away from where you see those boats now. Absolutely. On Tuesday and Wednesday for the Masters. Collaroy, bit of a runner down there on your right-hand side. And we are back with Fairhaven and South Curley here. And you notice these sweeps lead the way. They don't just stand there still. They're getting up on the chocks. They're leading their body weight around, going backwards and forwards. It's not an easy job as a sweep, especially in these conditions, and especially with the open men who go so fast. Rob Leary having to look around to see what swells are nearby. And the Barbarians have come right up to them. One under there now. They're going to pump that one up. Let a run, says Glenn Williams, as he gets up off the chocks and back down again. They are on one. And they are cruising the Barbars and beside the Barbarians, South Curly Death Riders. They're going to pull onto this too, along with Fairhaven. We're just Fairhaven around a shot, so Collaroy going to miss out. We just need to see great work there. Fairhaven two, four are on it. One's going to miss out. Sorry, take that back. Everyone's going to get on. Yeah, those four are through. We build excitement for nothing. <laughs> great work here, mate. Of course, we are here for the open males. Well called by Don Cottrell here. 
and it's Collaroy who's going to miss out. So those four are going to get through. Fairhaven, South Kirkhill, Corumban Barbarians, and Coffs Harbour. Rude boy. Yeah, good row there. Strong row. Barbarians really put the pedal to the metal when they had to. South Curly on screen there. The T-bone man himself, Trent Rogers there. He may well stay permanently wedged until the next race. So we are doing the open male quarterfinals. We've got three more here, which will bring us down to the top 16 coming up next. In three races time will be the semi-final number two, the major semi-final of the reserve males. So there'll be eight remaining in the resis, bringing it down to six. So we're going to be racing right up past four o'clock. So if you're watching at home, in the toilet at a wedding, like we said before, whatever you're doing, do not keep your eyes off this. Uncle 24 Bobby watching from Toronto. Reopening our rowing club currently after five months of a winter layoff. Great to be watching the surf rowing crews. Good on you for commenting from bloody Canada, mate. Yeah, winter layoff, that means it was frozen over. Pretty chilly there in Toronto. Anthony Williams back in Vic. Great commentary. Feels like we're still there. We're trying to do the best we can with the weather we are dealing with. It's rain on and off. The wind's up. But we're doing a great job here. And once again, Don, three on the left, three on the right. This is heat number two. Yeah, Palm Beach, the Peter Pans in alley one. Lawn off shotguns on two. North Curl Curl, they're in alley three. Allura Wilco's in four. And Bull Eye Gold, and weren't Bull Eye Gold impressive in their last race? They absolutely blasted it off the beach. Caught a crab, stopped rowing, and then just can wound it back up again to take themselves back into the lead again they are next level these boys from Bulleye on the right hand side of your screen Grant Wilkinson in those embarrassing board shorts that his female crew makes him wear and they've jumped in now and away they go Palm Beach there on your left we are riding with North Curl Curl, Allura there and then again Bulleye, have a look at them over on the right hand side Man, if there was a race in the first three strokes, <laughs> Bulleye would be unbeatable. And let's see what happens. Palm Beach, left-hand side, got the work to do. The Peter Pans, so dropping one. They're the one at the moment. They're not too far off North Kill Kill, but they are got some work to do as they make their way out, negotiating the winds and the swells that we have here with the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. Bulleye gold a length in front of Allura. Then we've got North Kill Kill there. And the other crew, the Lawn Off Shotguns, once again, Jeff Matthews. Yeah, out around the cans again for Jeff Matthews. Riding with him there now. He is a strong performer at the Australian titles, Jeff Matthews. He's in, been in plenty of these finals. And can bring a crew up. As we look across the line there, possibly the crew of Palm Beach in Alley 1 with the work to do. We mentioned them earlier. Didn't get away with the rest of the field. Allura Wilkos. I think they might have medalled at the short course championship. Sorry, I'll take that back. They didn't. They hit the can now. Bulleye just around just in front of them. But Allura have managed to stay with them. And that Allura crew. Yeah, not the greatest turn, was it? Yeah, Allura don't get a lot of time in the boat together. They've got rowers in there from different states that come together for a row. They rode in the 160s earlier on this week, took that out in a fairly dominant performance, as you would guess. The row together certainly didn't help, hurt them in the 160 division. That'll be uh, Matty Norton, Matthew Guy, David Frew, and Daniel Ellis Flint, as mentioned there, mate. Shout out to Bruce Zillman, just sent me a message, the big Zillow. One of the greats from Chugan. Any corrections? 
No, no, no. He, he, uh, he actually just said that we're doing a great job, and he doesn't often give me a compliment, <laughs> mate. So. Now, watch Buller on the right hand side. Watch the next three or four strokes and what they do. Allura going to try to pull up. But look at this. It's like a thoroughbred in the last 200 down the straight. They've just popped off the back, though, but they're not too concerned because they're only dropping one. But you just saw the momentum that they got. They were just like animals. Have a look at them run. Those two crews there, there wasn't much underneath them, and they were able to work that. That is a good row there from Allura. They will be pretty happy with that. It's not every day you get to knock off Bulleye. Yes, they might have had the better of that run towards the end. But they had to put themselves into position to do it, and Allura will cross the line in first position. Shane Galovan from Bulleye. They are back-to-back -back Australian champions going for three in a row. Now, left-hand side is out of screen. There were three crews going on the same way. Pine Beach came right back in with it on screen, going up against Lawn and also North Curl Curl. So that's a photo finish. As you can see there, how tight's that one? We will wait on results there. Spency looking across the line there, the Palm Beach sweep. Certainly wasn't pumping his fist. Palm Beach may have missed out here. Sorry, make that Stephen Cox at the back of the Peter Pants. Apologies, Coxie. The distinctive sluggos, mate. That's all you've got to see. Oh, don't you? I love a sweep. Hey. Bring, bring back the DTs, the sweeps. No, Hughes, no. Hughes does it. Nathan, he does it. Nathan Perry. NR Perry does it. Yeah, he's a good looking man in, in speedos, is NR Perry. So confirmation, Collaroy Gnomes did miss out in heat number one, quarterfinal number one, but we got it back on board down on the beach in Tash Tunney. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm down here with Dave Prairie from Allura Wilco Crew. Um, that was a pretty good chase for that runner then. You and Bulleye were going at it. Just snuck away from you. You guys have enough speed to uh, get the win. Yeah, it was good. I mean, you know what Wilco's like. He'll, he'll make us work for everything. So, good. Uh, always good to race Bulleye. We've had him three times today. So, um, hopefully in the next one, we don't get him. <laughs> What's the um, annual training plan been for you guys? Annual. Um, it's a monthly boat session and then ergs and weights. Yeah. And it's money. phenomenal. And the average age of the crew? Uh, 45. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, good luck. Well done. Yeah, as we mentioned, 160 Masters champions, the Allura Wilcos. And they don't get to row together all that often. Not that we think that's the ideal training lead up into a national titles but Allura there you go just knocked off one of the favorites Bulleye and we go into quarterfinal number one heat three Corumba Norseman in alley one Quincy Open men's in two North Cronulla Squidgies in three McMaster's in four and the Wanda Weapons Wanda Weapons current ASRL champs Keep an eye on these guys. If they get a bit of clear water in front of them, the Wanda Weapons will take advantage of that. Good young blokes. The Weapons come through as 23s together. Been together for a number of years now. They're sweet, Nathan. At the back there. I know that Dave Chapman from the Wanda Club now at Tullabuzza will be watching keenly here. His Wanda Weapons. He loves the Wanda boys. Masters in the centre of your screen there. And North Cronulla Squidgies on the left-hand side. Never a dud crew out of North Cronulla. As we wait, check start is happy. Tide coming back in here, wind picking up. Not the most pleasant day to be on the beach. There is a wider shot there. You can see the gaps in between alleys two and three. Rumba Norseman in one, Quincy in two. Queensland, New South Wales state champions. Damien Daly at the back of the Queensland crew. Gun mustn't be up. They're all looking fairly upright and fairly relaxed, these open men rowers, as they wait for that gun to go up. Check starter's flag in the air. He's content with the line. Just waiting a confirmed result from the previous quarter final as they get underway. Great start there. Bit of a check there on the Wanda crew, and they've got another one to deal with. Oh, they're away though, Azza. 
Wanda, they've been able to deal with those couple of bumps. North Cronulla copping the worst of it just then. McMaster's beside them, probably at the slightly better part of the way. Pumps working on the side of North Cronulla there. You can see the water coming out of the side of the boat. Good start down there in Alley 1 for the Crumman crew, swept by Will McDowell, the Kiwi jockey he is. And besides them, Queensy on screen now on your right-hand side as they make their way out to sea. Nice long strokes there from the Kurumban crew. Need to be accurate in these conditions here. Don't get the blades too far up off the water. You want a very smart, quick catch. And these are the best in the business, these guys here. Wanda Weapons on the right-hand side. They have been the form crew in New South Wales, current ASRL Open champs. New South Wales champs. They are having a good season, are the Wanda Weapons. Yeah, Queensy did pip them at States, mate. But Sorry. Well, they're out now, though, so we'd just say that uh, you'd say that Wanda are the, one of the top seeds, regardless of what happened there, because, as you said, they won the ASRL Open Silver at State and uh, really making their way into the turn nicely. There's our State champs. Thanks for the correction, mate. There they go around there now. Queenscliff, one stroke, two strokes, and they're rowing. They pretty much start rowing after one, and away they go, and they've... Put probably half a boat length on Corumban on that turn. That was pretty sharp stuff there from Queensy. We are dropping one here. Corumban Norseman in Alley 1 on screen there now. You have got Queenscliff, North Cronulla in the centre of your screen. Masters to the right. Queensy running the top of this one here nicely. To the left of them, Corumban Norseman still in it. Queenscliff on screen. Little runner underneath them. They will milk the top of this one. Rating comes up. Move along. Damon Daly looks over his shoulder, just checking where Corumban is and checking for the next wave. I think he wants it here. That's a good row ho from the Queenscliff crew. Crew there with a bit of work to do is the crew in Alley 4, McMasters. They may well be the ones to miss out here. Queenscliff cruising home here. And that's a pretty dominant performance from them. Wanda down the other end there in Alley 5. They are going to comfortably get home as well. Queensy just tapping it across the line. We're dropping one, mate. We can't make it too much more exciting when there's a bit of a gap like this. But as you can see, Wanda, top two or three once again. That's all they need to do at this stage of the racing is just continue to row without mistakes. Now, let's see what this crew, are they going to slew? I think regardless, they're going to be right on the line anyway. The North Canala squidgy with the McMasters coming through. Their campaign over. Coming up next, South Kill Kill Sneaky Nuts in one. North Canala Scraps in two. Freshwater Blue in three. Mermaid Beach Kennards in four. Port Kembler in five. After the next race, it's major semi-final time of the Resis. McMasters just cruising over the line now. That's the end of their season. They will put the boat on the trailer. Bad luck. They found themselves in some pretty hot competition there, though. Last of our quarterfinals of the Open Men coming up now. So as we keep ploughing through, we're still aiming at about a 4 o'clock finish at this stage, if not a little bit later. So you've still got a couple of hours of excitement as we're making our way through the reserves and the opens and just reminding where we're at the under 19 females were won yesterday by south uh sorry by palm beach the men under 19s the under 19 male was south kirk the under 23 females has been running one today northcliffe winning that one and south kirk winning their second gold here in the last 24 hours in the under 23 males and of course, as a major national partner of Surf Life Saving Australia, DHL has been helping Surf Life Savers deliver safer beaches for over 20 years. And today, DHL is honouring the dedication of the 20 plus year club, which celebrates volunteers who dedicate over 20 years of service to their club. A gap again between alleys three and four. Filling the first three alleys there, South Curl Curl on the left of your screen, North Canola Scraps. Get the name Scratch because those rowers have rowed for various crews throughout their rowing history with North Cronulla. 
and they have come together as a crew. Second year rowing the North Cronulla Scraps. They were silver medalists at the Australian titles last year. The Scraps on the screen now. Marty Fletcher and his Mermaid Beach crew. Current Queensland team. Current Queensland champs. And beside them, Jack Patterson and Port Kembla. So waiting to start here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Chance at Alexander Headlands. It's just hit 2 o'clock local time, so that tide's going to start to come in over the next couple of hours of racing, which will make those races just that little bit longer and might even bring some sort of surge with the swell, fingers crossed on. Yeah, Peter Spence complaining the other day about the shortness of the races, unlike Spence, he'd have a whinge. But they do have a big program to get through here. So as we've mentioned, that this is going to be the finals day. So at this stage, pending a major delay or anything that happens, we're not looking at any racing tomorrow. So this is the finals day of the Aussies here in the Surfboat Arena. Looking to get through all divisions here, get all medals done. Gun is up and away they go. Bit of white water in front of the crews down in alleys four and five as the crews in one, two and three jump over a bit of green swell. And we have got Freshwater Blue is on camera there. Crew in Alley 2, North Cronulla Scraps Once jumped away again. nicely. Once yeah. again, mate. Mermaid and Port Kembla on screen now. Mermaid, they are good starters as well. Strong start there, North Cronulla in one end and Mermaid down the other in the distinctive Red Kennard's boat. Centre of field there, Freshwater Blue. Boy, you've got to be going to get yourself up the front with these crews. They are lightning in and over the gunnel and on. North Cronulla, look at that rating. Dropped it right off, just sitting it back, sending the boat nicely. Freshie are the ones that are probably a length off at the moment. North Cronulla, as mentioned, and also on their left-hand side, the Sneaky Nuts from South Kirkwell, the top two leading the way. And as mentioned, those Queensland champs in that red boat of Mermaid will be your top three. So the crew's dropped off just a little bit, not too much at the moment. Alleys three and five, Port Kembla and Freshy. Uh, yeah, North Cronulla on screen there, I thought, for a second. They are approaching their turning cans here. We're going to get a better indication of where they are. It looks like Port Kembla to me. Jack Patterson at the back. He's on the white can. He's in the climber boat. That's going to spin pretty quick for him. Mermaid around, North Cronulla around, and so are South Curly Sneaky Nuts. The top three. Marty Fletcher gets her around quickly. Oh, old school boy How turn was that? there. Yeah. Yeah. That's the old school boy turn there from Marty Fletcher. So you're talking about a 200 kilo boat. Then you've got probably four to 500 kilos of meat there between the five bodies. So you're moving a lot of weight, and it's not just the rowers working hard. You just saw Marty Fletcher rotate in a bit of a 360 to get that all back on the right side. But they've pushed right up with North Cronulla. So they're the two. Bit of a run on the right-hand side. Port Campbell milking it. They're going to drop off, and that wave now is going to hit uh, Mermaid and North Cronulla. There are the scraps there on screen there. And they're pushing down this little runner here as they come back through the gate cans there. Sweep just avoiding that gate can. Marty Fletch on the right-hand side. Runner underneath him now as well. Up the rating. Here come Mermaid running the top of this. Can they turn this into something? Big, powerful crew running the top of this. Have a look at this. <laughs> that is all just muscle there. They just muscled their way through that. Now, the ones that have hit dead water are the right-hand side, Port Kembla, but they've got one under them now at the top of the screen, and Freshy just dropped off, so Freshwater Blue are the ones in trouble. But look under him here. Mermaid Beach is safe. Then we're looking over at the scrap that are looking good. And now it's going to be on for the young and old. South Kirk are there on the left. Freshwater get the wave they needed. Oh, they do need this wave as well, Freshwater. We don't quite know where the line is here. Sweep looking left and right across the line. Oh. He would have a fair idea as to whether he is in or out. I reckon South Kirk will get third. And we'll wait to see what happens with the remainder and while we're at that we'll give an update of results from the previous couple of races as we look at the app so it was McMasters who dropped off last one lawn off shotguns have missed out on a photo finish about 10 minutes ago so lawn are out of the wow. open men that's an upset there lawn off shotguns got pipped by North Kirkhill and Palm Beach Peter Pans as we're moving 
onto the reserves. So top eight now. Two fours, top three will make it through to the Australian Surf Life Saving Championship final. We have our top eight in reserve men and we are looking for the top six coming up shortly. We are just going to throw down to Tash on the beach. Who have you got with you this time, Tash? I don't have anyone with me. I'm just here with myself. Um, we're just giving you a bit of an update on what the vibe is down here at the beach. We're getting closer to those finals. So we are hitting the um, semi two for the reserve male and the females. Um, some really good running down here. It is pretty tight. Um, the surf's come up a little bit. So they are getting a little bit of a challenge just as they're getting off the beach. And certainly we've seen a few good waves, um, a few party waves as well on the way home. So um, the rain is just still sort of on and off, dribbling through. The wind has settled a little bit. Um, but it's not, not too bad, so um, the water's warm if you're standing in the water. Of course um, it is, you're from South Australia. Otherwise, right. it's, um, it's not too bad down here, and certainly it's not putting off the spectators. There's plenty of people hanging around um, to see these finals and see who um, wins the medals and takes home the chocolate. Tash, so, we were talking a little bit earlier about the best view in the house being at the uh, Alex Bar at the top of the hill. How's that looking at the uh, Bodie Bar? The Bodhi Bar. The Bodhi Bar is busy, as always. Um, we know that as yeah, we're just going to turn around so you can see it behind the starters tower there. Um, but certainly, you know, as, as they tend to get knocked out, they'll shift up to the bar and um, watch the rest of the racing from up there. And we can expect, you know, with racing going out today on a Saturday, which is unusual for Aussies, we can expect, um, you know, what? Alex Marucci and Malulabar to be pumping tonight. And I dare say a few will get down and check out the flags down at uh, Malulabar as well. But um, yeah, pretty pretty exciting. You know, that little excitement starting to start to bubble here on the beach as we get close to the big finals. Good on you. Thanks for the update, Tash. Karaman Huskalas in one, Kuji Suns in two, Karumban Odins in three, Palm Beach Padlocks in four. Yeah, good start there out of the Corumban. Two crews out of Corumban and Palm Beach as well. They've flown out on your right-hand side there. The crew from Coogee has found itself amongst probably three of the hottest reserve-grade crews in the country here right now. They're going to have to pull one out here, Coogee. If they can stick with these three crews, that will be impressive. They are top eight. And we are looking for the top six to go through to our final. Dropping one here. Corumban Huskarls, alley one, left-hand side of your screen. Kuji next along as we move to the right. Corumban Odins. They are my pick for the reserve. Hopefully that's not the commentator's curse. And Palm Beach Paddock's on the right-hand side. We've got Kuji on the right-hand side of your screen there now. Yeah, great calling there. They're going to drop one. So this is where it gets real exciting for the reserve males here at the Aussies. We normally say Sunday, fun day, finals day, but... Saturday is going to be the one here. We're going to finish just after four o'clock. So really looking at that crew that Don just mentioned, the Odins. They're not the ones on the screen. That's a Huskar. So Karaman got the two crews here making the turn there. They're probably half a length in front, if that. Let's see who turns better, Don. Yeah, turn there. The sweep from Karaman just put it in neutral. That's Matty Wildman. Away they go. The Odins are out in front there in alley three. I think the race is on here for the miners. The Odins. On the screen there now, I think. Crouching style of their sweep as they just chase whatever is out in that ocean. To the right-hand side of them is Palm Beach. I'm assuming that's Peter Spence, mate, with the paddocks. The padlock, sorry. We can look at our uh, form thank guide for sure and have a look. Thank you. So we are running here with the Corumban Odins, Queensland State Champions. And on the right-hand side, Peter Spence and his Palm Beach crew. If we go right back across to the left, Corumban Huskarls and Kuji. Wave coming underneath them now. Are they going to be able to take this and bring themselves up these, with these other crews? These two crews probably will. Let's see what happens. The ones on the left have missed out, but once again, you've caught it. The Odins, they'll get this. No worries about that. Palm Beach sitting on the top. They're not going to get it. So one's going to get through. That'll be the Odins, and there's a wave behind. Let's see if that brings in alleys one and two, being Karumban and Kuji Sons. Yeah, this leaves it open here. Some of those leading crews just dropping off that one, opening it up for the Kuji Sons, and here they come. The Kuji Sons, Palm Beach in dead water. They want to get to that line as quick as they can. The Huskals and Kuji sprint to the line there. Karumban Huskals to your left, Kuji to your right. We will leave that one up to the line, judges. Palm Beach are in going to be between the left-hand side of Kuji and the Karaman Huskals. 
We wait a couple of minutes. Video line technology in use. So Palm Beach Padlocks and the Kurumban Odins are going to be the first two crews into the final for the reserve male, mate. And Huey may have just done a favour to the Coogee Suns. Stevano mentioned that they are all sons of Coogee Old Boys. And they may have just got themselves in an Aussie final. Well, while we wait, mate, next one, major semi-final number two. The top three will make it to the final. North Canala Brooks in one, North Canala Boffs in two, Mermaid Beach Resis in three, Palm Beach Pelicans in four. And again, we see these dominant clubs from New South Wales, Palm Beach and North Cronulla. Four boats Palm Beach brought. There we go. Minimum. Minimum. Yeah, and you see them when they hit the line and they have to pull the oars out and let the other crew rock on in with their own oars. And that's what probably is today is good for a bit of kite surfing on the foil. Left-hand side, North Cronulla, Brooks and Boffs. Point cart right in the distance there, giving us a little bit of protection from this southerly southeasterly breeze. Also protecting us from a bit of that swell. Mermaid Beach Resi's there. Marty Fletcher again. You mentioned four to five hundred kilos of weight in the A grade boat. Marty Fletcher's not contributing much to that. Matty Giblin there sweeping the Pelicans fourth place in New South Wales State. North Cronulla right next to each other, Boffs and Brooks. North Cronulla without a clubhouse currently. Correct. Had a major renovation done. Got him more trouble in the early settlers with the builder going broke, appa broke apparently. And it is that close to being finished and they just can't get back into their club. Crews training with their boat captain, Boff, who is in Alley 2 here. One of the great men from North Cronulla, the Boff. He sure is. Coming up next will be the reserve female major semi-finals. Not too far away as well. So we're getting right into the sticky point of the action here. Not too long to go, two hours. So get yourself comfortable wherever you're watching. Let us know where you're watching from as we're getting on the comments here of the live stream, both on YouTube and Facebook. We would love to be seeing the drone in the air as much as you guys would as well. We're hoping that we can get it up by the finals. No success so far today. North Cronulla on the screen there at the moment. So four here, three will make it to the final. Just awaiting the results from the previous mate as we continue to refresh the app. Palm Beach there, look like they've got about half a boat length at least on, on Mermaid. And I'm going to be the bearer of bad news for you, mate. Oh, not Crum and Huskals are out, are they? They are. Yeah. Could you sons, mate? There pulled is, one out. There is no God. I, <laughs> I've just pulled in the second Stephen Bradbury of the day as they've made the final. But here we go. Great start, left-hand side. North Cronulla Brooks with the boffs. Mermaid there in the red boat. There's a wave coming on the right-hand side for the Pelicans to negotiate. Even on the left-hand side in alley number two as they get hit over this one. That'll only slow them down half a length or so. They'll get it back together, although they're pretty... Uh, Took a bit of boat pretty, speed uh, off yeah, Palm Beach. It? Yeah, knocked them a bit. A little bit of time in the air. Dropped the boat speed off. Pumps going. We're riding with the two North Cronulla crews, and the Brooks have got the best out of that. Mermaid Beach shot out as well. They're looking at crews in Alley 1 and Alley 3 might just have their noses in front of the North Canola Boffs in 2 and Palm Beach Pelicans in 3. Yep, Palm Beach got hit by those two. We saw Boffs working the pumps just before. They've cleared out the water now. So nice, long, strong rating here. Look at that. Nice, clean and crisp. And that's extremely important, John, in these conditions. Yeah, strong finish there. You can see them just keeping the oars in all the way through, sending that boat nicely in these bumpy conditions. The longer you can keep the oar in the water, the better. Length is a secret here today. Absolutely. Don't let the weather dictate you too much. Mermaid still in that top two. Top three going to make it to the final here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Champs. It's still nice and choppy. As you said, there's a bit of coverage, but we're nice and wet. And everyone's doing a great job. Is there probably five or six strokes out? Let's see. We notice Marty Fletcher will tuck that sweep all behind him. Let's watch him closely on the right-hand side. Yeah, let's look for the old school boy turn from Marty Fletcher. 
Spins around to the other way, pushes a couple of times, slips the oar back out from behind him. There he goes. Sweet balls goes back around. He spins back around into right-hand mode, it's and off he goes. Straight onto one almost. Yeah. Great run. Not too many sweeps still doing the old school boy turn, but Marty Fletcher is one of them. The ones that need to do the work, probably Ali's one and four. Not too far off, though. They're only a length to a length and a half. You can throw a blanket over these four crews for sure. It's just the uh, Mermaid Beach crew in front, that red boat. Now, these are the two North Canala crews, left-hand side of the Brooks, and Boff sitting on one nicely. Now look at the one behind Ali number one, Don. Yeah, pick the rating up here. Here is your chance in Ali one. The Brooks, North Cronulla Brooks, looking nice and steep behind them. Yeah. Nothing much down the other end there, and the Brooks are going to whip into this one. That is Boff. I think it's gone past him. He's having a good look around. Yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll, that'll be Brooks. Brooke Fleming on the left, Boff on the right. Jeez, I tell you what, Mermaid have just dropped off. They're sitting on top of this. Yeah, Palm Beach aren't, get, aren't going to get down this as well. We've got another sprint finish, and there's North yeah. Cronulla Boffs in Alley 2. They're safe. And can Palm Beach join these other two crews? Don't tell me North Cronulla aren't going to get the run well, here. Brooks had a brilliant run at the can. That fattened off. And now look what's happening in Alley oh, number one. Look Stitched at that. Up. Absolute dead water. He's getting sucked backwards there as the other crews down in three and four make their way across. And I'd be slapping the gunnel too. That's disappointing for the North Cronulla Brooks. So that's Boffs on screen. Sorry. Made, no, you're right. That was a slap that was of a joy. That was a slap of joy. Not the slap of frustration. North Cronulla Brooks are going to be the ones that miss out pending confirmation of the results. So our six for the reserve male final, Coogee Suns, Corumban Odins, Palm Beach Padlocks, North Cronulla Boffs, Mermaid Beach Rezies, Palm Beach Pelicans. Five clubs represented, two from Palm Beach. So there we go. Thanks for watching. We've got a couple of hours to go. The excitement continues at the Aussies. So we're moving on to the major semi-final of the reserve female. Where we've got Mordialic Mojo in one, Karumban Concords in two, Lawn Prawns in three, South Kill 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 Kill, kill in four. And uh, two Vicks in this one head to head. Surely never. Hey. Yeah, you don't see that too often. Good on them. Morty Alec Mojo. Of course, Matt Molkay sweeping them. Lawn Prawns, Jeff Matthews on screen there to the left of South Curl, 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 Curl. Yeah, need to put a bit of thought into that name, South Curly. And the Morty Attic crew. My memory serves me correct. I think they were the winner of a Navy boat a number of years they ago. They were. It was a competition to yep. design the artwork on your boat and Morty Alec good winners so the Navy boat Jenny Collins Jess Callagher Helen and Lara Squires I know one of them's dropped off because uh, Mez Baker's rowing for one of them and Matt Morkay has mentioned for the mojo on the left hand side they did win that Navy boat a few years ago and away they go good start there lawn prawns Jeff just getting in the boat now it's getting pretty deep getting real deep for Whoa. him just getting in there, Jeff Matthews. He would be a decent sea anchor to be dragging around as well. Morty Alec get hit there on the left. Now, they've got a great start, but look what's coming for them. Morty Alec oh. Mojo on the left-hand side. They get hit the hardest. And yeah. Karuman goes straight past them. Yeah, I'm thinking that was good sweeping from Karuman there. He stopped them just for a moment. It was a stop rowing, then row, and he's just timed it nicely to pop over. Another one. Oh, Morty Alec. They have copping plenty on the way out. That may well be Steve Purcell we're looking at there at the back of the Corumban boat. Steve Purcell, a wander boy from years ago, got himself up onto the Gold Coast and has found his home at Corumban. He has been gold medals the last two Aussie titles with his junior girls, the Chili Peppers. Left hand side there, mate. Yeah, you're exactly yeah. right. How good's the Chili Peppers been? Their story for three years, making another final here yesterday afternoon yeah just finishing outside the medals too i think in fourth position the chili peppers don't quote me on that yeah they did there are our four boats all on your screen there morty alec they've worn more than any on their way out and they are trailing the field we are riding with the corumban concourse right there maybe lowell clark wouldn't it steve purcell 
and I think, mate. Take it back. Our paperwork says Lowell Clark. Apologies, Lowell. We'll see how we go when it gets closer in. So the two crews of the Victorians that need the work to do. Right-hand side, South Curl, 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 Curl. Right up there with Kurum and Concord. It's probably two lengths in front of the Lawn Prawns who won the ASL Open. But the ones that are winning are on screen right now, the Curl, Curl. South Curly, around they go. And as if you get a chance, can you just have a look at that Kurum and Concord's crew for me? Just tell me who's in it. If there's a Davina Fincher in there. I don't think they'd mind me saying they're the old girls. We've got a Davina Finter, Michelle, Catherine, Penelope, Hamilton. Yeah, they are. They've been around for a while. Those girls. A well, lot of a lot of rowing experience in there, and a lot of medals in that boat as well. Well, they're controlling the tempo in the top two at the moment, looking to make the final of the reserve female. It's still the the curl curl leading the way. Of course, that distinctive sweeping style, Gus Materi. Yeah, one hand on the sweep ball there. Oh, oh, good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> yeah. Two, three lengths in front, sitting on top of one. He can control his own way in. Now, Lorne, a little one sitting under them. They're the ones that are third at the moment, which will get them in the final unless something happens. Morty Alec not out of it yet. It's still really flat. Nothing really on the horizon yet. One for Morty Alec on the left. That'll go under him. South Curl Curl, mate, they drop off the back. I think they've done enough, mate. They're going to get themselves over the line. They're in alley four. Gus there. He's definitely got one end on the sweep ball now. Huh. And in he comes up onto the chocks, and he's going to guide them over the line. Comfortable win there for South Curly. As we look back across the line, Corumban home as well. And I'm thinking that's going to be the Lawn Prawns and the unlucky Morty Alec Mojos. Smacked a fair bit on the way out. When you get smacked around at the start like they did here, and especially with the shorter race, all of the tide is humming in. So they're going to be the ones, let me see out, but the ones on screen, ASRL Open Champions, now finalists in the reserve female, Jeff Matthews. And a really solid campaign for the Mojo for Morty Alec, top eight in the country. So that is semi-final heat number one of the major semis. Coming up next, Avoca Beach Chaos, Marichador, Madams, Allura Wilco and the Bowbirds. Two from Queensland, two from New South Wales. Avalon Beach being swept by Nathan Wellings. Marichador, Madams, Michael Brooks up the back of that. Allura Wilkos. Well, that's pretty obvious. Wilco sweeping them. And Noosa Heads Bowbirds. That would be Davy Tumba. Tumba. It would be. Third bronze medalist at Queensland State, Noosa were. The Madams took out the chocolates. So we got two of the top three from the Queensland State here. In this one, in Ali's number two and four, Laura Wilco. Of course, Edwina Wright, ASRL vice president, is having a row with them. Nathan Wellings sweeping the Avalon Beach chaos in Ali number one. As what we've seen now is this tide's come in, mate. They've all moved to the right. No longer working in pairs. They've all gone together at this stage. So you think that's Avalon Beach we're looking at there, mate? Correct. Avalon Beach Chaos right next to them. Marichidor, Madams, Allura Wilco out of shot with the news ahead Bowbirds. As you can see on screen there. So they're now all tucked up together with that tide coming in. That the, the beach start has changed. That hole's probably been filled in. And they're all together on the right-hand side. And not just that, but also the wind. So they'll start to move down to the right-hand side to, to navigate their way out. Look at those shorts, eh? Hey? Oh, they're terrible. Wilco, you should be embarrassed. The girls mm. bought them for him, matching to their togs. Yep. Been there, done that. You mentioned Edwina Wright, subbed into that crew from the Tullabudgera Club. That's the second year in a row that Eddie has filled in for Allura. They've been quite successful getting a fair way through the program last year. Gunners up. Away they go. 
Focusing on the alleys two, three, and four. Oh no, the two seat of Maruchidor dismissed the start there. Not the greatest start at all for the Maruchidor Madams, the uh, Queensland State champs, are well off the pace. Yeah, pretty handy crew. They'll be disappointed with that start. They've got a bit of ground here to make up. They'll be looking for these other crews to cop a bit of water. Allura Wilkos have done just that. Up and down, nose into the next one. Knocked oh. all of the boat speed off Allura. And Maruchidor, mate. They're going to get hit by another one. Uh, Brooksy, hand in the air, reckons Wilco's gone across the path in front of him. Yeah, we can see you, Brooksy. Well, they've got course cameras now. They've got these cameras too. We'll see what they do. But out in front, left-hand side, Avalon Beach, Chaos. And on the right-hand side, Noosa Head, Bowbirds. Those two crews are off and gone. Now we saw in the minor semi-final, Allura Wilco turned fifth and rode through two or three crews to finish strongly. So they're not out of it either. Noosa heads Bowbirds. Davy Tumba on screen there now. Got the helmet on along with his bow girl. Jess Arvella, ex South Australian. Samantha Rartley with that. Rachel Patterson. And of course, the lovely Kate. Katie Tumba, wife of the sweet Dave Tumba. We see a few of those combinations. And what can Michael Brooks do here? He shouldn't be relying on a protest, that's for sure. Well, he's probably he's not going too bad. They're, rolling, they're only a length, a length and a half off, and there's still a long way to go. They haven't even turned. Noosa on your right-hand side, angling into their turning can now. And they're not even operating off Alley 7, mate. That's on Alley 6. Yep, and you can see Maruchador have had to work back to the left. Now, whether that says something or not of what happened before, but they've actually gone they've gone too far right. They've had to go back to the left. There's Allura make the turn. So Maruchador are going to have a pretty narrow turn out of screen. And they've got to try and catch Allura. Avalon Beach, easily in front. Yeah, on your left-hand side of your screen, on pitch in there now, Nathan Wellings at the back of the Avalon Beach crew. Rick Miller will be looking down and liking this. He would love to see from up there another one of these dear Avalon Beach crews go through to an Aussie final here, and it's the chaos from Avalon Beach. Ooh. Leading their way home, there's Maruchidor. Laura and Sophie Tara, Sophie Valentine. And Nathan Wellings has mentioned, so they're looking good at the moment. Maruchador have come right back into it. They might not even need to put that protest in because they've come right into it. Alongside Allura Wilco, you can see how tight it is there. And there's a wave coming. Let's see what they can do. Avalon Beach left-hand side looking good here. Nathan's really, really razzing him up. But we're going to have three crews on the same wave. And here we go. We've got that drone. <laughs> yeah, we love it. There we go. Oh, and that helps. Look at this. Three boats on the one wave here. Maruchidor, they've been able to row up and they're going to go side by side again with Allura. Crew down the other end there is Noosa Heads. They had won the rowing race in the second position. Now they've had these other two crews catch up with them. You can see there that Avalon Beach are across the line safely and it will be a sprint to the finish. Looking at the angle there, hard to pick from here. Possibly Allura just missing out there. Hey, it's just enhanced their coverage a little bit more, hasn't it? We got the drone. Great to see the weather's calmed off. We've got it up. They know they're in the final. Nathan Wellings, of course, back-to-back -back reserve male champions over the past couple of years. And he's wanted to, want to get a gold in about an hour's time with a reserve female. So we'll wait to see what happens. I'm sure there's going to be a bit of discussion. Megs is stomping up there, as we see. We've just finished the reserve female, and we're on to semi-final number one of the open female as we get the draws up for that. And once we get it, semi-finals. Corumban Hunters in one, Bull Eye Gold in two. You can see the crew, Bull Eye Gold crew there ready to go. Port Kembler OGs in three. Palm Beach Pirates in four. Corumban Cockatoos in five. Malulaba Chop Suey in six, Don. Yep. We're going to take four through. And we may well have Tash. Tash down on the beach. We'll cross to you, Tash. Yeah, I'm going to do that on beach. Congratulations. Uh, thanks, Ash, as well. It's, it's been a great weekend and a great year for us girls. So it's been really good. Looking forward to it. Uh, that was a nice little wave there, a little uh, lead there coming home. How was the race for you girls? It's good. We feel like we can do this. It felt, it felt really good. It's hard, but like, I think we're doing really well together as a team. So we're happy. We're ready to go.
you've got someone who's done it before, picking up a resume mail gold before at Aussie, so um, you know what the pressure's like, you know what it's about, so do you reckon that helps you? Um, well, I've racing got a lot against, uh, against a lot of good crews and sweeps. We've all done it before. Um, it's a matter of just working as one and hopefully we'll live luck on our side. Well, congrats. Good luck, guys. Laura Ann, Sophie Tara, Sophie Holmes, Sophie Valentine, Nathan Wellings getting it done here as we're going to a replay finish of the drone. Here we go. So look at that comprehensive victory there. Three lengths in front going through the gates. Marichidor Madams came right back up to him, Don. Yeah, they had the work to do there. Marichidor, that wave has done them a massive favour. Feel for Noosa down the other end who got swallowed up by these other two trailing crews here. Three boats on the one wave. Look at Marichidor there trying to get themselves onto that wave. It must be the next one that they take. As Avalon Beach row wave in front. And there's that wave building for the trailing crews. Great shots here from the drone. Happy to have the drone up in the air. Makes our job here a whole lot easier and a whole lot more enjoyable for the viewers at home as well. From semi-final number two, which included Morty Alec Mojo, Corumban Concords, Lawn and South Curl, 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 Curl. There is an on-hold note on that result, so I'm not too sure what's happening there. Between Morty Alec, Corumban, Lawn and South Curl, Curl, there's an on-hold note, which means that there's something up in the air. Yeah, we had Morty Alec as the crew missing out. So there's some sort of review. We're still waiting to see what happens with the semi-final number two, the reserve female as well. So we might have a bit of time to wait on the confirmations, but there it is. Beautiful shot there of Alexander Headlands. The crew at the bottom of your screen there is the Corumban Hunters. They are the current Australian champions. Swept by Lowell Clark. Very handy crew second in the Queensland State Championships behind their stable mates, the Corumban Cockatoos. In Alley 2, we've got Bulleye Gold. They've been rowing very nicely. Paul Kembler, Jack Patterson. So they're back. They're, sorry, mate. They're backing them up here. Yeah. Palm Beach Pirates in four, Corumban Cockatoos in five. That may well be... No, that's the Hunters on the screen there. So six in four will make it to the top eight. Yeah, Malulaba chops you in alley six just around the field out there. Three of Queensland's finest in this one. And g'day to Brett Ross. He's just flicked me a message. Good stuff, mate. Glad you've tuned in, Rossi. Benny Townsend, you're out there as well, mate. Got a comment from... Pismo Beach in California. This is awesome. Been watching for days. Thanks, Australia, for introducing this to us. Well, they got a bit of a different surf boat over there, don't they? The old dory boat. Yeah. Yeah, two men in, no sweep. They, those things go everywhere. They are not designed to catch waves. Pretty chaotic as we've got this semi-final. So Aram, the open female just held back here on the line. So just while we're waiting, a reminder, this is the finals day. They're trying to get everything done by 4.30. So I know they're bang on timing at the moment. So any sort of delay just makes everyone a little bit nervous. Who do we have there? Lise Buchanan? Yeah, she is the, uh, the daughter of the Australian cricketing coach. Buchanan, whose first name escapes me, isn't John. That terrible? John. John. John Buchanan. His daughter rowing in the Corumban Hunters. And they would have to be one of the most technically correct crews going around. They've got motor in the centre and they've got the twinnies, one in the stroke, one in the bow, twin sisters. Got a comment on the live stream. Great commentary, guys. Getting itchy again from one Matt, Matt Hickey. Oh, hey. I caught up with Matt over Christmas. We, uh, we shared a better beer. Good man, Matt Hickey. Great to see you tuning in, mate. And, yeah, we would love to see you back in the boats, mate. Pretty handy sweep. There's Matt Hickey. On screen there. One of the Hollymans. Yep. Of course, we've mentioned them earlier today. Strong sporting family. Yeah. A few stretches there. And there we've got our Kiwi connection there. 
She has her father, horse, on the beach. Gee, that's not a bad one. Gee, I'd be pulling something if I do. There'd be muscles going somewhere with me trying to do that stuff. Not Audrey. Home. Audrey there, having a laugh. Solid jacket, too, representing Piha. Yeah. Waiting to see if we do have Tash on comms. We'd love an update to see what is going on, Tash. Uh, yep. Brett, Brett Dowker. Yeah. <laughs> How are you going? Uh, Brett, just going to have a little chat to you just about the championship for you. Um, what crews did you have racing? You had your 19 girls. Yeah, we had a young little bit from a cutoff to your 16 base. The bit that Bobby told us for them, some new experiences. They got through the quarterfinals and um, punched above their weight, but they were disappointed, but they could be very, very, very happy. The women that are better from Sirens, uh, we could have been Thursday, and they also went around on Thursday, and they were leading, but ended up forcing the death by one. Um, as those junior girls, we used to get them down at Lawn in that under-17 uh, final. Um, the 17 final, just how was that for you, for the girls? What did they think of that? Oh, we loved it. Look, the pathway for those young rowers, male or female coming through, being able to get into the boat at an early age is going to just give a lot of sustainability to our school girls. The introduction of 17 was fantastic for us and for you guys and everyone. Yeah, I think my girls, well, I enjoyed it. It was great to be racing against your peers and not against the big 19, your 18-year-olds that have been in it for three boys. But um, good stuff and hopefully we'll see that back at um, the Open next year. Um, how, what's the event for the club? I mean, how many crews have you got here this weekend? Um, I'd have to check with Stinky, our um, boat captain on the exam of this weekend, because we've had 25 crews this, uh, this season come and go, and it's been a bit of a mixed bag. But um, I don't know, the culture of the club is amazing. 25 crews in the men's that is something pretty special. There's no egos there, everyone just gets in and helps them and down here catching boats today. Doesn't matter what age they are, everyone's helping out. So at the end of the day, they're making very good unions, good lifesavers, patrolling our beaches, and um, yeah, could be a part of that. And how, like with a section that big, how do how do you keep it sustainable and and um, and keep it, um, I don't know, ticking along and not having any argy bargy amongst people? Yeah, look, a lot of people on the outside sort of think there's internal fighting or there's got to be extra competition because there's so many open males, so many open females, but everyone gets along so well. Um, I won't swear on camera, but there's a no-something policy and those sort of people get weeded out. Yeah, and that is the policy. They've got to pull their head in and it's a, it's a great demographic. I've come from Bull Skis and I'm a bit of a, a relative newbie to the service and I just love, I, I wish I had got into this years ago. Um, yeah, it's just magic of policy and everyone just pulls you away and it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're in the front team or you're starting. But my little girls that are 16 and in and under 19, get, it, they've got the clues coming and helping them, rowing with them, sharing a boat, and it's just brilliant. I just love it. Like I know last year I was rowing with Corumban, so I did a quick little switch over and um, certainly for me as a complete newcomer and not knowing anyone, um, just they wrapped around our crew and were helping us and um, it was really, you could really see that that section's huge, but they're all in it together. No, they are. Look, you're making friends at the end of the day, good memories, and um, yeah, we're very lucky. Um, right -o. well I reckon we're about to get some racing on the line here, so we're going to cross back to the boys. Um, it is the semi-final number one of the Open Female. It sure is. Thank you very much. Getting ready for a start. Currumman Hunters, Bull Eye Gold, Port Kimberler OGs, Palm Beach Pirates. Kurumban Cockatoos, Malulaba Chop Suey. Yeah, Brett Dowker there, ex Iron Man from the other end of the beach, has seen the light, got himself down into the boat section, and they are away in the Open Women's semi final number one. There is Lowell Clark just climbing over the back of the Kurumban Hunters there. They are the current Aussie champions. And we mentioned how technically correct they are, the Cockatoos down there in Alley 5 on your screen now. And there is Bulleye, Jonesy, left-handed sweep, Paul Jones from the Bulleye Club. And they've been racing nicely here today as well. So you almost got to treat this one as a final because knowing they're dropping two from this, so six in at two will drop the Pirates. Just hitting some dirty water there in alley number four from Palm Beach, still going up and down. So with that incoming tide, we're going to notice that the swell will just be a little bit fuller. And uh, you can see on screen, once again, Karaman leading the way. Yeah, that looks like the, uh, the cockatoos there to me. They are the Australian, current Australian team. Swept by Matty Wildman. If 
I've got that correct. A bit hard to pick here. It could either be them or the Hunters. Apologies if I've got that wrong. But we are riding with one of the Karuma crews there now. There's just so many we can't keep tabs, mate. Of course, pretty close here. They're dropping two. So the next stage of this will be 12 in the open. Women will go down to the top eight. So four will make it through. Great shot there. Port Canberra on the left. They're definitely in the top four. And Coxie there with Palm Beach. Not too far off the pace. Probably 10 strokes from the turn. Might have been teasing us there before with that drone in the air. We don't seem to have it this time around. But on your screen to the left there was Port Kembla. Jack Patterson with his wife in the stroke seat. They were the New South Wales state team. And his wife captained the New South Wales team. What a great honour for her. Corumban Hunters. Turning on the yellow can there, that may well be the cockatoos. Around they go. I am going to call that as the cockatoos, current Queensland champs. So the crew just off the pace will be the Malulabar Chop Suey, but don't discount what they can do on the back half of the race. Bulleye Gold also, fourth or fifth. We mentioned Port Kemmler before, Emma Shannon Morgan and Renee Patterson. Yeah, coming across the line there from your left-hand side, Karum and Hunters on the left, Bulleye Gold, next boat along, Port Kembler. And now we are racing back with the Cockatoos. We think they may have hit the lead down there in Alley 5. Yeah, definitely them and Port Kembler. The crews that got a little bit of work to do would be the Palm Beach Pirates and Malulabar Chop Suey dropping two from this. Four will progress, mate. They're hitting the gates, which means it's wave time. Yeah, and here we go. Port Kembler here, Jack Patterson. Had a look back over his shoulder. He needs a little wave here just to cement himself in the top four here to go through to the second semi-final. Right-hand side, Malulabar Chopsu is sitting on one. So, Jack Patterson, you can see on screen. Look at this. He's caught oh, him easy, mate. Hey? Nice. Nice wave. 70, 80 metres from the finish. That'll get him over to the top eight. Now, right-hand side, Malulabar are going to pull onto one. Can they sit on it? They're trying their best. Left-hand side are looking good, too, with Bulleye and the Hunters. So, Malulabar pulled onto one, mate. There's going to be two, three, four crews going for second place together. Bulleye are going to be good. Jeez, I'll tell you what. The crew that's in trouble is the Cockatoos from Karuman, unless they get a shoot over the last little 10 or 20 metres. But uh, it's going to be tight between those two crews on screen, Karuman Cockatoos and Malulabar Chop Suey. Confirming Bulleye Goal look good. Port Kembla, mate, they took the win. I think Karuman Hunters might also be all right. Yeah, I don't think Palm Beach made it through then. We I'll put a pen through their name, but it will be an upset if the Karum and Cockatoos have been knocked out here. If Malulabar has been able to come from the clouds there and run past them on the line. State champions, ASRL Open champions. We mentioned fourth at Aussies last year, mate. They've done everything, and Chook will be a little bit nervous at the moment. Yeah, current Australian team. They are well credentialed crew, the Karum and Cockatoos, and this will be an upset. And possibly a sigh of relief for those other Open women crews still in the program. Coming up next, semi-final, heat number two, six in it on screen. Maruchador Chums to their left, Surface Paradise, Spice, Lawn Edge. Uh, in alley number three, Evoca Beach, Zenith, South Kill Kill Shakers, North Cronulla Funkies. Now, let's go back to the open men of, uh, sorry, reserve female. Let's go back and see what happened between those two semi-finals. So we mentioned earlier, Morty Alec, there was a hold on theirs. There's still a hold on both semi-finals, so there must be two forms, whether they're protest or confirmation. Reserve female, both semis, has not been confirmed yet, and that was 20 minutes ago. Yeah, there would be a crowd in front of the Donga chatting with the liaison officers and the disputes to see what's going on to get through there. Something's obviously happened in the race. Results are getting punched in. Malulabar have made it. Oh, no. We're just awaiting to see what's coming through. Well, this is just, 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 I'll jump the gun here. Paul Kembler won. Bulleye Gold second. Malulabar showing his third, but we'll just, that's all that's up so far. You're killing me, mate. You're killing me. Palm Beach sixth. That's up. It's an interesting way to put the results up, mate. <laughs> Something wrong with your phone. Gun gets them away. They're just keeping you on edge. There is Michael Brooks. Been around the can several times here today. Timber Sweeper is his preference there. Left-handed sweep, and he's got not a bad start there. A couple of lumps in front of him. Seems to be a bit of wave in front of the crew in Alley 1, Surface Paradise. But Michael Brooks 
up and over. Brings the girls forward just to lift the bow that little bit more. And he is out. And beside him, Morn Edge. They had a cracking start there as well. And then I go down to the North Cronulla Funkies down in Alley 1. They might have jumped out there. South Curly Shakers on your right-hand side as well. And we have North Cronulla to your right. South Curly to your left on screen now. I think North Cronulla, the Funkies, have got their nose in front. Those girls have been together for a long time, rode in under-23s together. They were the Australian under-23 development crew a number of years ago and have managed to stay together. Surface Paradise on the left-hand side there in the distinctive pink boat, rowing out, and on your right, you have Maruchidor. Disruptive season for the chums. One of the girls has either a broken foot or a broken hand or something, and that kept her out of the boat. Yeah, that was a long stint out, wasn't it? Yeah, it certainly was. So 10 strokes to go from the turn. Really tight racing here. Two are going to drop off. Jeez, I tell you what, it's going to be hard to pick. Evoca Beach, Zenith and Lawn Edge might be the two that are just a fraction off, but I wouldn't put the uh, call on that too early. There's six or seven strokes in. Let's see who turns... First, the right-hand side, North Cronulla Funk is angling in now. So are the North, uh, South Curl Curl Shakers. Evoca Beach Zenith. Look how tight this one is. Yeah. Maruchin or Chums just probably half a length in front, mate, but the rest are even. One of our tightest turns that we have seen all day. It is on for here for sure. We are only taking four of these six boats through to the second of the semi-finals. And on screen there, South Curly might have turned just in front of the other crews. I'm not going to mention one hand on the sweep or again. On your right hand side, North Cronulla Funkies, well across to your right, South Curl Curl, Evoca Beach Zenith in the centre of your screen there. And now our competitors in one and two, Surface Paradise and Maruchidor. Maruchidor look like they've got the wood on surface here at the moment. Mate, I think they've got the wood on everyone. I think they're the only crew that are probably a length in front. You can see they are. The crew coming down at the moment is a uh, sorry, South Curl Curl Shakers. But they're going to start to hit the line in probably about 30 seconds time. Let's see what happens over the next five or ten strokes. Megzi starting to bark orders. And on the right-hand side, South Curl Curl Shakers, top four through, Don. Yep, have a look at Maruchidor if we can get him on screen here again. I think they're about to pull over the front of that one. He's led a run, and he's going to glide down the front of that one with South Curly. There's your first two through to the second semi-final. And it is on for the Miners, dropping two boats here. Surface Paradise, square up that boat, Hughes. You've got to get it around. Give it a good push, Hughes. Straighten her up. Surf, he's had a look around. He knows he's through. They're out of shot at the moment. So two are through. Let's see what happens. North Cronulla Funkies on the right-hand side are going to get over for third or fourth, I'd imagine. Lawn Edge looking the better of Evoca Beach Zenith. And Surf is Paradise Spice in another postcode. We'll see where they finished. Just we on are, the left. We are going to have to revert back to our line judges there again. All right, let's push through some previous results. Still awaiting on that open female from the previous. Unless you want to give it a refresh as well, Donny. I will. Of the open female, I'll go to the reserve female. All yeah, right, you've got the same as you, mate. We've got a mixed bag here on the results, which is pretty unusual. So I'm not sure what's happening there. They've got video, four. video for fourth and fifth would be my only thought. Yeah. The only one they're confirmed with is that is out is the Palm Beach Pirates, and it's between the Corumban Cockatoos and the Corumban Hunters. Stable mates there to see who is going to pick up the last of the qualifying positions. We've got Paul Kembler in first, Bulli Gold in second, and Malulabar Chop Suey. They must have come from the heavens to get themselves in a third position. Brendan Weston with his wife Sarah in the crew as well. So they're doing pretty soft cuts here, and they're the opens, and they're the ones that want to row in a premier grade. So they're giving them the love that they deserve. Quarter to three here, so we've still got a fair few races to go. We've got four quarterfinals coming up of open males. Top three will make it through to the next round. Getting ready for a start. Yeah, we are down to our top 12 here. 
left-hand side of your screen is Palm Beach Peter Pans, the Fairy Haven, Angry Otters in two, Wanda Weapons in three, and Mermaid Beach Kennards. Wanda Weapons in good form. As two are the Mermaid Beach Kennards in Alley 4. But boy, all pretty handy crews. Shot of our finishing stand there in the bright orange box. That is the finish line technology. That is a camera that looks from one finishing stand across onto the other. They draw a line on the screen, and that would have come in handy on several occasions today. That technology developed by the ASRL. Don Bristles Alexander and Bert Hunt involved in the early days of getting that technology right. And the gun goes, and in and away they go. Down on the right-hand side there, Mermaid Beach Kennards off to a flyer again. If they don't have too much water in front of them, they're going to jump out here in Alley 4. Waves down at the other end of the course. Up and down. Yeah, no, Mermaid, they're going to punch through that. Wanda Weapons, they're flying as well. On screen there now, your right-hand side, Mermaid Beach Kennards, Queensland State Champs, Wanda on your left-hand side there. Silver medal, I think, in the New South Wales State Championships. Winners of the ASRL Open, quality field. Girl Kill, North Cronulla Funkies and Lawn Edge have pipped Surface Paradise and Avoca Beach. A couple of Queensland crews going out there. The current Australian champions are Corumban Hunters. They are out. That is a, a real shame. And Surface Paradise, the Spice. Graham Hughes, he shouldn't be disappointed, but he probably will be. <laughs> On screen there now, we have got the crew from Fairhaven, the Angry Otters. To the left of them, Palm Beach Peter Pans. And they're going to head out to their turning cans here now. And let's just see how they hit. Wanda Weapons angling in. Oh, all four boats angling in. Bang, around they go. Synchronised boat racing here today at Alexandra Headlands. And who's out and around square first? Possibly Wanda Weapons with the better of the turn. Mermaid also at 90 degrees back to the beach and let's see who can work these runners on the way home we are riding with wanda there now current asrl champions they're only dropping one here and how tight is it mermaid beach sitting on one they'll get three or four strokes out of this still sitting on top the ones in the middle at the moment just dipping off a length or so so left hand side still looking good the peter pans the right hand side mermaid another lift again and look at fairhaven's turn now they got one behind them too, Don. They're all in striking range, all four of these boats. Palm Beach, Fairhaven, Wanda, Mermaid. It is tight racing across the line. Little runner in underneath here under Fairhaven. They're going to run the top of it. That's as good as it they're going to do. Look behind them. Yeah, wave coming. All four on it. All four on it for sure. Here we go, Don. We're going to have four on this for sure. Left-hand side have hit a little bit of dead water, actually, Palm Beach. There's two on it. Fairhaven also. Palm Beach. Palm Beach on the left-hand side. Can they get down it? No, they can't. Alley one again. Oh, disappointment there for Palm Beach. That race was there for all four crews, and it's the three crews on our right-hand side that have managed to drop over that one, and they are going to cruise over the line, and they are going to progress through to the semi-final. Unlucky, hey? They yeah. were right up there. They were top two at the gate can. Yeah, Palm Beach, Peter Pans. But you know what they say, everyone's always got a story. Yes, there'll be plenty of stories later on in the Alexandra Surf Club. Seems to be Bodie Central in underneath the clubhouse there. And, of course, moving on to quarterfinal, number two, heat two, Karam and Norseman matched up against the Barbarians, North Kilkill, Gorgonites, and the Schwockers, Maddie Collins, Coffs Harbour in alley number four, four in it. North Kilkill swept by Sean Stacey. So there you go. Sean Stacey 
He's got a gold medal or two. He won one a number of years ago with North Narrabeen at Karawa. And then he backed it up with D. White a number of years ago as well at Karawa too. Sean Stacey seems to come and go, but always competitive when he does get here. And there is Will McDowell up the back of the Karumba Norseman there. Silver medalist, Queensland State. One coming. Let's see how they negotiate this one, mate. Right up on top of it. Nice work. Yeah, Sean O in the bow there, Coppin. One over the top, and his fiance was in the successful Corumban Cockatoos crew that got through on that last race. We were just talking about Sean Stacey, North Curl Curl. Well, they're the leaders at the moment. Top three will progress. He's had a look over his left shoulder and seen he's a couple of lengths in front. Nice and controlled. You see the tide's really coming in fast now. This race is getting longer by the minute. Crew over there on your right hand side, Coffs Harbour Swaggers. I reckon they're dark horses. Commentator's curse. Well, you never know. They, they owned it in the last race, and we're just sitting in our donger at the back, and you can hear the rain absolutely teeming down. The winds is, you know, moderate at the moment, still south to southeasterly. But these open men, they'll row straight through this regardless. And it's still North Curl Curl just in front. Karuman coming up to them on their left, and in this shot now on the right-hand side, Coffs Harbour who've got to do the next two minutes with the old commentator's curse. Matty Collins up the back of the crew from Coffs Harbour. We're going to see these crews now start to angle into their turning cans. North Curl Curl, they are going to hit. And they're going to go around. The sweep has leant forward, grab hold of the strokes oar. That's not a bad turn at all. Coffs Harbour driving off on an angle there. Don't know if they'd be that happy with that one. That might have given the advantage to these other three crews in the southern end. Corumban Norsemen, Corumban Barbarians, and North Curl Curl, Coffs Harbour. Not with the greatest of turns there in Alley 4. Don't ask me how they've done it, but the Mordialic Mojo have qualified for the reserve female final here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Champs. Maruchidor Madams are the only crew out of those semis that are out. Wow. You can obviously put up a good argument. Mordialic Sweep, we call them as being out. So two crews from Victoria in the reserve female final, but that's for later on at the moment. We're focusing on quarterfinal number two, heat two here, and there's a wave coming, focusing on the right-hand side, North Curl Curl. Look like they have the best of the run, but they're all probably going to miss this one. That might be party time. Barbarians there in alley two, probably winning the rowing race here at this stage. Glenn Williams urging his crew on. There's nothing there for them. And here we go. Uh, the wave's going to get everyone onto the same boat here. Possibly Coffs Harbour. They're going to have to lift here on your right-hand side if they want to join these leading crews. And they are running down the front of that one. And yes, Azza, we have four boats on the one wave. Yeah, we definitely do. We're going to pan over to the left when we can. There's a show. Oh, one no, one's off the back. The Norseman Karaman are going to get knocked out at this stage. Will McDowell, that's disappointing. The wave must have just slipped underneath them because they were right up there. Glenn Williams on screen there now with the Crumb and Barbarians. Silver medalist gone from this one. He's just uh, had a cheeky little slew across the line now. So on screen, the Barbarians. Once again, Glenn Williams, you caught it, are going to get through. Sean Stacey on screen, North Curl Curl. Gorgonites on screen at Coffs Harbour. Jesus, you gave them the wrap. They're going through to live another day here in the open then. Yeah, just snuck through then. I don't think they were convincing. So there we go. Crumman Norseman, silver medalist at Queensland State. Will McDowell, unfortunately, with his lads, are out. North Curl Curl take the oars up, move the boat up, get it ready for the next race, which will be semi final time. Just going back through the history books here Sean Stacey, 1998, Karawa, winning with North Narrabeen. And he's done it again with DY in 2019. So. He's no slouch in the open boat, Sean Stacey. Getting ready for a start in heat number three, quarter final two on screen. Freshwater Blue to their left, Port Kembla, Bulleye Gold, and Allura Wilco. You wouldn't sneeze in uh, any of these crews. It's going to be definitely hot for sure. Bulleye and Allura don't discount Port Kembla and Freshie either. Yeah, four hot crews here. 
all out of New South Wales. Check starter happy with the line. In and away they go. Shane Gullivan up and over the tuck. In he goes. Jack Patterson there at the back of the Port Kembla. Pretty good turnaround here now. These times for the Open Men Division. It wasn't long ago we saw these guys travelling out. Oh, the crew down there, Allura Wilkos. A little bit of work to do for them. And Bulleye, as usual, they have shot out in Alley 3. Probably got a boat length on the entire field. There they are on the left-hand side of your screen. Back-to-back uh, -back Australian champions going for three in a row. And if we're looking for three in a row, we need to go back to the Mona Vales and North Cottesloe where they have done it. And then all the way back to Ross Jorgensen in the Warrywood crew for open men's crews that have won three in a row. Bryce Munro from the Mona Vale Black crew. I see him back on the beach, back involved again. And Jack Alice from North Cottesloe also being able to achieve that three in a row. Great work. You've nailed it. And on screen, that pull eye crew. 10, 12 strokes away from their turn. Top three will make it through. Port Kemba on the left hand side. Probably equal with Freshwater Blue. We probably caught it just before the start. The pull eye gold. And also Allura was showing some hot form leading into this. And now that it's flattened off again with that wind just dropping with the rain on. And it's a nice long row. It's a rower's race at the moment. Nice and long, three or four strokes out. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, Paul Kembler, I think, on screen here now, coming in. And watch Jack Patterson turn. He's reached down, he's grabbed hold of the strokes or pulled it back towards him. Away they go. They just about do one stroke on their turn. And they don't lose too much boat speed there. A little bit wide, but what they didn't do is stop the run of the boat. They've been able to continue the pace of the boat around that. They have come a bit wide to the right of them. We have got freshwater blue. They're not out of it either. So I'm thinking all these crews still in contention here. Allura on your far right hand side. They are the bronze medalists from last year's Aussies and beside them the gold medalists, Bulleye Gold. There they are on your right hand side. And we mentioned what a dominant crew they have been over the last decade, especially at the New South Wales State Championships. Allura on your right, running the top of that one. Wilco at the back of them. Nice smooth rowing there from Allura. And boy, look at the rate come up there. It's ridiculous. Again, oh, look, just, still going. It's a ripple. There's nothing there. He's and he's still just, going. And he's going to turn that ripple into a wave, and he's going to show us why they are the number one crew. So they, you would have seen they kicked up to the north. Our left, his right, to chase that run. Look at the one on the left-hand side. And Laura Wilco's hit dead water now. This is going to be exciting because the left-hand side, Port Campbell, pulled on it. But Freshy Blue, they're going to have to navigate a late takeoff here, Don. Yeah, wave of the day oh, coming in behind and up. around. Freshy around, and that's going to help Wilco out down on the right-hand side. And they have flicked off the back yeah. of that wave. Alex Walsh has fallen out. Freshwater. Oh. Yeah, he knows it too, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. he will be gutted. We haven't seen too many late takeoffs today, but we could predict that one from a fair way out. Allura Wilco hit dead water, but they've managed to uh, navigate a wave, and the surf gods, Huey's looking all over them. Yeah, Natasha Tunney mentioning the swell had popped up a little bit, and it certainly had. That's probably one of the bigger waves we've seen of the day. And Freshwater got themselves caught in no man's land, right across the back bank without any assistance, and then they got one from behind. And the sweep on screen there now. He had a tough job to do and he was unable to keep it straight. And that is all over for Freshwater Blue. Making his way in. They'll be the ones that miss out. Of that, we've got one more open male quarterfinal. And then it's time for the reserve male and reserve female finals. So if you're watching here, Wherever you're watching, we're only 10 minutes away at the most from the reserve male and females as we get underway for the next race. Flags are up, Tash, down to you. Okay, here we Shane Jalevin from Bulay Gold. Um, nice little race there. Yeah, got some uh, good little runners on off. Good. Um, pretty hot heat there. You had um, Allura, yourself, Port Kembla, Freshwater. Yeah, I think this is the uh, Bulay Allura draw. We'll race them every race, I think. But uh, nah, it's, um, it's going well. 
what's your expectations today? Keep getting through. One race at a time? Don't want to jinx yourself. <laughs> Alrighty, no worries. I'll let you go and get your boat ready and um, we'll see you in uh, the future races. Hey, one race at a time, one race oh, at a time. One of the classic statements there. Hey. He's not an easy bloke to interview. South Kirkill, Death Riders, North Cronulla, Squidgy, the Scraps once again, and Queensy right hand side. Yeah, two North Cronullas in the centre of your field here. The one on the right hand side, the Scraps, current silver medalist at the Australian Championships in Perth from last year. We are looking at them there with the striped oars. And they are looking good here, the North Cronulla Scraps, to continue further and deeper into this program. So, Squidgy's on your left hand side. Sorry, Azza. No, mate, just going to say what happens after this. There'll be 12 crews left in the open mail. So, this is the last one and start to get ready for the resis. But you were just mentioning, Don, the two North Cronulla ones in the in the middle. But it's the left hand side, alley number one. Of course, the Death Riders. Yeah. That is Termite Rob Lowry at the back of the Death Riders. Looking strong there in alley one. Michael Egan. Craig McCartney, Trent Rogers, Jordan Thurlow as well. Yeah, and as mentioned before, the termite Rob Lowry, he's already got himself three gold medals at these titles. Under 19s in the men's, under 23 in the men's, and in the 240 Masters. And now he's around, he's around there again with the Death Riders and looking solid to progress through. Beside them was North Carolina Squidgy. They're probably a boat length and a half behind the leading crew of the Death Riders in Alley 1. And as we've seen in the last couple of finishes, mate, the ocean's starting to come into play here and ain't over till you get over the line. Yeah, I think you're going to see the swell pick up at least another half a foot in the next hour and a half or so as we make our way into these finals. So stay with us. We've got about at least a dozen races to go here on the program. It's the North Canala crews on screen going stroke for stroke, matching it. Both trying to get through. Might not be the case, though. We'll just have to see what happens. The Death Rider sitting on top and drop off the back. And, Don, you said it in the other race. This is anyone's game, and it's, a, it's the same again. Yep, they're all within striking distance here. South Curly having a look. The Termite there looking for a wave to his right and looking at the other crews to his left. A little runner here for him. He's angled off there. Party wave. I'm oh. calling it. Party wave. Is it going to happen oh, for the Death crew Riders. on the left? Death Riders, Ali one again. Oh, no. Oh, they're just oh. running into deep water there and the left-hand side of our field. Well, oh, Death Riders led it from go to not woe. Now, they're in a tricky spot here. That'll be the squidgy just sitting on the back of that bubble. And uh, unfortunately, oh, that was solid, they, yeah, solid sweeping from Mark McDonald, mate. But South Curly Death Riders just hit nothing. Okay. That is another upset there, the Death Riders. They are out of the competition. Winners here in 2019. And that will be disappointing for that crew. So, of course, we are getting ready for reserve racing. We're looking at the reserve males. We'll just wait a couple of minutes until they get on the starting line until we do announce them. Of course, keep the comments coming, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Let us know where you are watching around the world. We've had comments from Puerto Rico, Toronto, the USA. San Diego is getting involved too. Let us know what's happening on your afternoon, Saturday Arvo. What a great way to spend it, watching the best surf boat rowers in the country, well, definitely the world as well. And speaking of the world, world titles. Oh, we're going to throw down to Tash on the beach and we'll have a chat about the world titles after that, mate. OK, down here with Mel Aker from uh, Avalon Beach Surf Club. Um, Mel, one of our marshals this weekend. Oh, yeah. How's it been marshalling? Cold. <laughs> no, it's been pretty good. Everyone's been getting in their alleys early, so we've been able to get the races going quick, and uh, at times we've been ahead of time, so it's yep. been great. Yep. Um, how do you think we're tracking to get everything through today? We will get everything through today. Oh, I like her confidence there. We're going to get everything through today, guys, all the way through to finals. Um, how many races have we got left about all up? 
about six, I okay. think. Yeah, about six. We're about to start the resi fi resi finals. finals. Yeah, and then we've got a few semis. Two semis oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, so there's a few more races to go, a little bit more racing, but we are going into our finals for resis. Then we'll be going back into some semi-finals for the uh, open male females and then hitting their finals as well. So um, the day is going to start to speed up quickly here as we get through to finals. So, um, But shout out to all the officials. Thank you for standing out here in the rain all weekend. Looking forward to a drink tonight. Yeah, and a warm <laughs> shower. Thanks, guys. Back to you. Good on you, Tash. I better finish it today because I've changed my flight, but... Uh... And we can't do it without them, our officials, the IRB guys out in water safety, the jet ski, the guys up on the towers, the guys and girls up on the towers. And that would be cold and lonely up there. Thank you to all of our officials. As you can see, some of the boats starting to get packed up. Of yeah. course, most importantly, I'll see the cup, couple of the lads on the tractors there waiting all day patiently. So it's not just those on the beach. It's a logistical, extraordinary setup. The Australian titles, three or four different venues that they use. It's just incredible that the size of this event, over 8,000 competitors and probably 2,000 boaties. Yeah, we certainly make up our share of the senior competitors. A good third of the competitors down in the boat area as we wait for the final of the reserve mail to get underway. Mentioned before, Point Cartwright out there in front on the top of the screen there. The Lulabar tucked in on the right-hand side and it curves around to the beach where on Alexandra Headlands. And you talk about massive events that we just mentioned this one is, and we touched on it just before we spoke to Tash, but the uh, world titles, mate, it's coming here. Yeah, Wells coming up on the Gold Coast, Karawa. I think it's October, September, October. September, mate. September. Early September. There we go. If you want any information, Craig Williams knows what's going on in the boats. If you've got a bit of an empty feeling, Marty Fletcher, deep in reflection right there. If you're feeling a bit of an empty feeling, you might have missed out on an Aussie title. There is an opportunity to win a world title. Actually, the it's the last, it, it is the last week of August. Funnily enough, I might be coincidentally for a winning, so I'll make the most of that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for wherever you are watching on YouTube, Facebook, around the world, we are now introducing our reserve male finalists here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. In alley number one, the Coogee Suns swept by Paul Bill. In alley number two, Mermaid Beach, Rezzy's Marty Fletcher on screen. North Cronulla Boffs Blue Reserve Crew in alley number three, the Pelicans of Palm Beach in alley number four, swept by Matthew Giblin. The Kurumban Odins in alley number five, swept by Lyle Clark. And in alley number six, the second crew from Palm Beach in New South Wales, the Padlocks, Peter Spence. On screen there now, the Coogee Sons, as mentioned before. They are sons of old boys from the Coogee Club. Good story that. It is a family affair, surf life saving. Mermaid Beach on screen there now. Marty Fletcher. Been around the cans plenty of times today. They'll be wanting to get away to a good start. Mermaid Beach, Will Ben, Luke Taylor, and Alex Winkler in that crew there. Yeah, Lukey Taylor. He's been rowing for a lot of years. Open rower at the highest level. Family commitments now. Can't give it his all for opens in his air reserve. And away they go. North Cronulla on the screen there now. Palm Beach beside them. And we are looking at the reserve grade final of the 2024 Australian Surf Life Saving Titles and flying there, Corumban Odin. I had an asterisk on these guys earlier on in the day. They are the Queensland State Champions. Oh, a bit of a crab there from the Bowman from North Cronulla. Just got a bit tangled up as they went over that. Oh, down in alley one, kaboom. Was that Coogee, mate? Yeah, it definitely was. 
You could almost put a pencil through them, unfortunately, because on the right-hand side, they've blown it out of the park. Palm Beach Pelicans, Kurumban Odins, and Palm Beach Padlocks in alleys four, five, and six, as you can see on screen, are away. Not too far away, Mermaid Beach Reserves, North Cronulla Box in equal fourth, but it's the right-hand side, Palm Beach Pelicans and the Odins. Yeah, the pace is on. The two Palm Beach crews in four and six and separating those Kurumban Odins. As we come across the field there, there is a Kurumban Odins in the centre of the field there, Palm Beach either side of the Kurumban crew. And we have seen some really quick racing out of these reserve grade crews today. None quicker than the Kurumban Odins. Swept by Lyle Clark. Formidable crew. And they're going to take it out here and lead us into our turning cans. Palm Beach are going to stay with them either side of them. As we move back across, we've got North Cronulla Boffs to the left. Mermaid and Coogee copping a fair bit on the way out. We are with Palm Beach here now. Turning on the blue and white can. Palm Beach Pelicans, mate, you've caught it. Equal first with the Kurumban Odins, who you're calling as well. Equal third place would be the Palm Beach Padlocks in alley number six. And you've got alley number three, North Cronulla Boffs in fourth. Back to Mermaid and Coogee Sons in fifth and sixth. But it's equal first at the moment. The Palm Beach Pelicans and the Kurumban Odins, New South Wales, Queensland. And you caught it all day. Kurumban Odins are just starting to go into the next gear. Good turn there from the Kurumban Odins. They got themselves around really quickly. They are on these runners on the way home and they'll be working the tops of these little waves. And there they are on screen now. You can see the rating come up as that nose goes down. Palm Beach beside them. They're not letting them go. No, they're not. Palm Beach are right there. Matty Giblin there, the sweep of Palm Beach. They're the top two at the moment, but we're going to see some swells come shortly. It's the last 30 strokes of their season. They've got to put everything into it. Kurumban still leading the way just in front of Palm Beach, but look who's coming into it on the left-hand side. North Canala Bluffs, mate. They've hit the gate cans. It's still Kurumban Odin's just in front, but it's time for waves now, Don. Yeah, it certainly is, and the Boffs, they've had a good second half to their race. You can see them third from your left-hand side there in the white boat. We are riding with Kurumban Odins here. They've got their nose in front. They've got no wave coming, and Palm uh, Beach on the right-hand side. There's going to be two, three, four crews on this. The Boffs out of the centre of the field there. North Cronulla, have a look at them. They've got a little runner underneath them. Wave for Mermaid as well. They're going to come from the back of the pack, Mermaid. Are we looking at our state cha uh, Aussie champions here, North Cronulla? They are going to row across the line. The boss, give it a push, oh, big boy. Give it a push, mate. Yes. Yeah, he, he has done. Mermaid, they're going to get across the line. And on, look at the crowd, mate, yeah. on the beach. Unbelievable scenes there. The boff with the big swan dive out of the back of the boat, and they are pumped. We're going to wait to see the confirmation of the placings. Palm Beach were right up there on the right hand side. You can see boff on screen. What relief for him. Mermaid Beach came from the clouds as well, but it's the North Cronulla Reserve men, of course. Congratulations, and we'll get the remaining places shortly. Michael. Boffinger, Patrick Hunt, Kobe, Ben and Christopher Sims. They've done it for North Cronulla. Boat captain of North Cronulla for many years, the Boff. We mentioned before they don't currently have a clubhouse. A lot of the club training is done at Boff's house in his garage. He leads by example at that club and he's done it again, the Boff. He has got his crew over the line in the gold medal position. We are going to wait for some clarification there now of the minor placings. Palm Beach on the right-hand side came into it along with Mermaid. They yeah. shot at the gates. Mermaid, I'm going to say Kurumban might be in there as well for a chance for the bronze. Mermaid might have come down and snuck in for the silver. And there are the North Canola Boaties getting around their crew. Look at that. Big Purds. Purdy giving the boys a cuddle as well. And there's Tash trying to get in amongst it, Tash. Get in there, Tash. Let's have a chat before the reserve female final. Uh, just announced it. Right out, Tash. Pull him in. Let's get into it. All right. Can you hear me down here? Yeah, we can hear you, Tash. Giddy up. <laughs> Good stuff. Can you hear me? Yeah, go for it. Okay, you got me. Cool. Okay, Bob, I'm getting absolutely drenched down here. Congratulations, guys. That was a massive effort. Aussies 24 gold medalists reserves. How was it? That was awesome. 
we had a bit of a hiccup at the start. The boys were very nervous being uh, beginner rowers, one of the boys. And uh, he just had so much adrenaline in him. After that, the boys just took it off. Chased everything home. Did it for the old boys. 48 years old in the bow. Two old boys, 38, 48. Two new rowers. What a row! I'm getting out of here before I get drowned. <laughs> Party time for North Canola. Congratulations to the crew of 48-year-old, as I mentioned. And uh, you mentioned that the training was done out of the garage and clubs just need to adapt, and they've done that for sure. Well done. 48 just coming into his prime in my mind. Good stuff there. I love this emotion. On the line. Finish line. There they are. Our reserve champions. They've had a pretty good weekend so far. North Cronulla, hugs all round, family and friends getting in there. The mermaid coming in there now to shake their hands, and, and we're away. We're away, reserve female final here, seven boater at the Australian Champs, Avalon Beach in one, Lawn Prawns in two, Allura Wilco in three, South Kill Kill, Kill Kill in four, drones up, let's get this going, Morty Alec Mojo in five, Karum and Concords in six, Noosa heads, Bower Birds in seven, we've got a four boater and South Kill Kill are away. Yeah, drone in the air. Good shots there coming through to us. Can't get that up. Oh, yes, I can. Here we go. South Curl Curl in front there of the cruise. There was also three cruising alleys, one, two, and three. When we got seven, it's a big party. And this is a reserve female final. Great shots there. Allura Wilco with those amazing shorts, mate. Yeah, Edwina Wright in that crew there. Eddie, vice president of the ASRL. They're probably sitting in about third or fourth position now. South Curly leading out here, mate. Yeah, we've got Alleys 1 and 2, Avalon Beach, Chaos and Lawn Prawns just back here as well. So we'll get them into the shot when we can. Noosa heads, Bowbirds at the top of screen. But they've done it for the majority of the day in the South Curl 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 out in front. Just love the way that they were reaching over there. The Curly crew getting their oars out in front and dragging that boat past the point. And look at that. They're a boat length in front of the cruise that we can see anyway, mate. The drone is going to zoom back here now, hopefully. Looking at the Allura Wilco boat, it's quite bumpy still, isn't it? It's deceiving, but they're going up and down. Yeah. Yeah, you can see. Another one here. Boat. Yeah. What you need to do, you need to have your bow reaching out here, your bow rower pulling the nose of that boat down. You don't want that nose of the boat spending too much time up in the air. You want it going forward, not going up. They're going to hit their turning cans there now. And there are Allura. They're hitting in. We think they're in around about third or fourth position. Now a three-stroke turn there. South Curly away. Allura in hot pursuit. Just trying to pick up the crews in alleys one and two. We haven't seen them. We don't know where Avalon Beach or Lawn are currently. But we have South Curly on screen. What you cannot see is Avalon and Lawn. Here we go. We're going to get the drone to spin around here. And there we go there. So Avalon Beach Chaos will be in the top three. Lawn Prawns just off a little bit, but there's still a long way to go. So Avalon Beach, there the crews in alleys one and two with a seven boater. We've got a lot of area to coverage, and they're going to be hitting the gate can soon. And back on that drone shot, South Curl Curl out in front. I would say Allura Wilco in the top three with Avalon Beach. Yeah, they've led from the start, have South Curly. They've got themselves away, and they appear to be going further away. They're going to need the wave gods to play their part here. We think Avalon Beach on the left-hand side here, the chaos, they might be in the top three there as well. But look at South Curly go. Little runner underneath them now. Oh, stroke rate comes up. These are definitely your top two leaders. These are the top two. It's South Curl, 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 Curl. They're leading the way. Allura Wilco got a little bubble under them that they'll miss. They'll start to hit the wave zone shortly. It's still looking pretty flat, but Allura Wilco, Don, they're going to get down. There's three oh, more big strokes, and they're going to pull up. Oh. I don't think too much water in front of it. Now it's South Curly's turn here. Not much there for them as well either. Oh, they're going to pull through this. It'll yeah, be a good row if they do. Yes, they do. South Curly comes through that. Allura still chasing it without much help. Going to get that drone to pull back. Yeah. Interested to see where Avalon Beach is here. But it's South Curly. Morty Alec have come into the picture too. So they could be bronze medalists. But it's not too sure where Avalon Beach and Lorna. But it's South Curl Curl going to get the gold second place at this stage. We're thinking maybe Allura will go. Morty Alec came into it too. Avalon Beach at the bottom of Valley number one, two. So we'll just have to wait and see. But how about that? Another one for South Curl Curl. Don't they just love Alexandra Headland, South Curly? There is your fourth final of the day. We've 
Done the 23s earlier with South Curl Curl having a win with the underdogs and how South Curl 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 here on screen. And Tash is going to get herself wet here again, I think. Nicola Berry, Ali Club, Willow Doyle. And Malari with Marcus Pateri. So Gus gets one, so he's going to join the party with Rob Lowe. He's a gold medalist here at the Australian titles for South Curl Curl. Yeah, and they're enjoying the moment here, the South Curly girls. Bob Spateri, he would be stoked as well. Great support from the South Curly club. And we're going to try and get Tash. She's in there now. Got you now, Tash. All righty, we're down here with the South Curl 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 Curl. Um, girls, that was a dominant race. You had a really strong lead coming home. You held on to it. Allura had a little crack at you. They couldn't get you. How does it feel you are the 2024 Aussie Reserve Female Gold Medalist? Amazing. We're so lucky to have such an awesome club who supports us and looks after us and always subs in. And amazing competitors. We just love the resi women. We're so lucky. To... Shout out to Bateman who couldn't be here today. <laughs> Bateman, super strong, yeah. got crunched on Thursday yeah. and um, unfortunately couldn't be here. Um, girls, what's the plans for tonight? We're going to have a big one with the girls. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a few things to celebrate. Your club's done really well this week, so um, enjoy it. Go and um, get, your, get your photo with Malcolm and um, we'll see you at medal presentations. Well done. That's the third gold medal for South Kirkhill in the Open Championships of surf boat rowing. They just continue to deliver and we do have confirmed results from the reserve male North Cronulla first Mermaid Beach second Corumban Odens third Palm Beach Padlocks fourth Palm Beach Pelicans fifth Coogee Sun sixth there we go confirmed results South Curly Gus Pateri still on the screen there and yeah three gold medals to South Curly you can add the Masters one to make it four so they have swagged four gold medals currently from these titles in the surf boats. And it's just memories of 2019 for South Curly. Yeah. Yeah. Trees gets the shot. The girls jumping for joy there. Second at ASRL, second at state, so they've done one better where it counts at the Australian titles. What a season. As let's get a replay of that drone shot of South Curl Curl. The Curl Curl, as you can see, that's the way they had to get. And you can see they pulled down it strongly. Now, Lua Wilco were charging. They had a great second half to the race, which we've seen from them all day. And we're just waiting, Don, on confirmation of results. Yeah, South Curly have claimed it, though. Lura just chasing them across the line. Couldn't climb onto the same way. <laughs> and Morty Alec, what a story. What a story. And we'll just wait to see where Avalon Beach and Lawn were involved in that top of screen. Noosa heads Bowbirds and Crumb and Concords coming over the line there too. But is it winner right? We have a bit of a smile on her face at the moment. Great shot there. Of course, the celebration's begun there for South Kill Kill. He's I've never been game to stand up in a surf boat while it's moving along. Especially with another one coming right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course, we are here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. The Aussies are supported by the Queensland Government through Tourism and Events Queensland. Be part of the action and discover your next Queensland event at queensland.com slash events. And while you're on the Sunshine Coast, make sure you take some time to soak up all the region has to offer. South Curly, they are taking up what Alexandra Headlands Beach has got to offer, and that's gold medals in reserve women. So, he goes from the Lawn Prawns over to the Lawn Edge. This is the semi-final, the major semi-final of the Open Female. There's eight in it, six will make the final. Lawn Edge in one. Maruchador Chums in two. Chop Suey and Bull Eye Gold. Heats of four boats taking three through, dropping one here to a six-boat final. Jeff Matthews on screen. Don't know if anyone's been around the Cairns any more times than Jeff Matthews today. Possibly Michael Brooks beside him in Maruchidor. 
Lulabar, Chop Suey, Brendan Weston in Alley 3. As mentioned before, his wife Sarah, as the gun gets them away, and away they go. Will I goal down in Alley 4. Good start from them as well. Good boat speed. Paul Jones at the back of that boat. And they are tearing off the beach here. Our open women crews. Crew there in Alley 1. Lawn Edge just copping a bit of a bump there. Richard or Chums mentioned before they've had a disruptive season. One of their crew had an injury. They haven't been able to spend the time in the boat. Oh, Lawn again up and down. That's got to hurt them, and it has. It's not the boat speed off them. They've gone up in the air a couple of times. You see Jeff Matthews bending over there before, grabbing hold of the pumps and switching them on. Brendan Weston at the back of the boat there. Fun fact, Sarah Weston, his wife in the crew. Brendan has one of her kidneys. And Sarah, five times open gold medalist. She is one of the legends of female surf boat rowing. She has won three with her husband at the Lulabar and two with Damien Claypan from Northcliffe. Bulleye gold to the right-hand side of your screen there, going with them. We saw, we saw it on the drone shot before. It's still just that little bit bumpy there. You see the bow of the Bulleye boat going up and down. It's Lawn Edge on the left-hand side that have the work to do. Definitely not out of it at this stage. Would not discount them. He'll be barking orders now. He'll be looking over to his right. He'll know where they are. And they're actually pulling up towards uh, Bulleye Gold. Still a length or so off. Dropping one. Dropping one. And at, the, at this stage, it's Lawn Edge in the sights of relegation here. They are a quick crew. What can they do? They'll need the Wave Gods to assist them at the back end of this race. And in goes our two crews on our right-hand side. Malulabar, Maruchidor are around. And Bulleye Gold just out of screen. Pretty sure they're yeah. around as well. All together, mate. Yep. Yeah. As you can see, the Maruchidor supporters there just down the road. We are here at Alexander Headland. So there's three crews all together. They're two lengths or so in front of the Lawn Edge who have it to do. You can see on screen they're not out of it yet. No, Lawn Edge hanging in, giving themselves an opportunity here. Water coming off the bow as they run the top of this one. Some good strokes there from Lawn Edge. They need to keep that up if they're going to come in contact with these other three crews. Maruchidor Chums on your left, Malulabar on your right, and just to the right of them out of screen, Bulleye Gold, our three leading crews. Oh, have a look at Lawn. They have not let him go. They haven't. They're fighting for a spot in an Australian final. This is what they're fighting hard for. 20 to 30 strokes left to go. You can see Megs, he's got those girls as he does with his crews. They're going nice and long at the back. Strong connect at the finish. They're probably just up there with Bulleye Gold equal first. Malulabar chop suey just a little bit off. And you can see there's not much coming, which is going to hurt Lawn Edge. Oh. That's an impressive row from Lawn Edge to get back within striking distance. This, that ain't over yet. This is Lawn's time now. The next five strokes on the left-hand side. I could see a wave under them. We're going to see if they can get down it. They're not. They've hit dead water again. Maruchidor and Bulleye. Now it's Malula back into them. And Lawn Edge, they might have used all their tickets going out. Yep, there's nothing there for Lawn Edge, nor for any of these other crews. They're going to get across the line here now. Three crews on our right-hand side, Maruchidor, Malulabar and Bulai. They are going to qualify through to the final. Megzi on screen there now. His mum, Karen, would be one very proud mother. Of her little boy, Megzi, board paddler. Oh, Lawn Edge going to come across and cause oh, some chaos. Oh, decent hit. Yeah. Jeff Matthews has fallen through the boat there. Now, just for those at home, that was past a line, so it, it, it won't affect the result. But uh, let's hope everyone's all right, because that was a decent hit. Yeah, sure was. Jeff Matthews Jeff blowing up there. Jeff uh, needs to someone pull him back there, I think. Yeah. I don't know what Jeff would be blowing up about here. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, it was past a line. Uh, disappointment there for the lawn edge. Unfortunate for them. Now, someone's just got to control him here because this is all on footage and uh, it's not a good look at the moment. Brendan Weston just walking away there, as he should. Not, not sure what was upsetting Jeff there. Yeah, so we're going to move in to the next semi-final of the Open Women, Port Kembla OGs, of course. 
We love seeing the crews from Port Kembla, North Cronulla Funkies in two, South Kirkill Shakers, and the Cockatoos from Kurumman in alley number four. One are going to drop. As mentioned before, Port Kembla, New South Wales state team representatives, Jack Patterson at the back of that boat, North Cronulla Funkies, the funky man himself there at the back of that boat. That crew been together for many years now. Come through the under 23 ranks together. Port Kembla on screen there now. Of course, in the climber boat. We could have seen their open female semi two here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Champs. To their right, North Cronulla. South Kirkhill Shakers in Alley 3 and in Alley 4, Kurumban Cockatoos. Cockatoos lucky to get through. They are my form crew here in this open division of women's racing. But they just got themselves through into the top eight here at the expense of the Kurumban Hunters. Seven races remain on my calculation. So we've got seven races, a good hour to go. So stay with us until about 4.30 local time. It's 3.30 now here in Queensland. So I've got one more of the open female semi, then two of the males. Open female final, the open male semis times two in the final of the open male. Oh, the mass is good. Chuck the mass is good there, as a. Of course, we are here thanks to the support of the Sunny Coast and Sunshine Coast welcomes all competitors, spectators and visitors to this amazing part of Australia and the world as uh, Fan Belt has been there all week with that flag. He normally wears a bit of a wetsuit, actually. He's gone brave in the Queensland waters. We'd be loving it. Well, he's not used to it, is he? No. it would be like in a bathroom coming well, from Victoria. Don't worry. In about a month or two's time, he'll be making his way back up here for his annual trip to uh, enjoy the waters here for winter. Like a lot of Mexicans. Oh, not wrong. May's the time they get out of there. Heads north over the border. Guns up. Away they go, Don. Nice start from the Funkies here. I like the way the strokes just jump straight over the gunnel there. Feet straight on. And have a look at the rate here in the Funkies. They got it really wound up here. And that's a good start there from the Funkies. Probably only anything any better than that would be the Cockatoos down in Alley 4. They're on your right-hand side of the screen there now. South Curly. The Shakers beside them. But the Kurumban Cockatoos, they've got a point to prove here. Oh, time in the air for Port Kembla there. Again, dropped all boat speed off their boat. They went well up into the air as they went over that wave. And while they were doing that, the Kurumban Cockatoos down the other end were going straight ahead. Now, just watching these crews, some of these rowers train eight, nine, ten times a week. And the speed that these open women have off the start is electric. And we just see it get better and better every year. And all those crews flew off the start. That is so strong, uh, Don. Absolutely. Jack Patterson to be telling his girls now, you're not out of this. You're not out of this at all. Uh, didn't get the best of starts, but he'd be telling them, process now. Don't worry about where we are in the race. I just want you to focus on your job. And that is the crew in Alley 1 with the work to do. Port Kembla, we go across to North Cronulla Funkies. They are in the mix. And then we go further across to South Curly. They're just everywhere this weekend, South Curl Curl. And our leading crew with a point to prove, Karum and Cockatoos. They would be disappointed that the Hunters aren't in there with them. Their other female open women's crew, as Brett Dowka mentioned before, a good tight club, Karumban. Paul Davies, boat captain of the Karumban club, as the Cockatoos angle in. Matty Wildman's going to grab hold of that stroke oar. He's going to whip it around and they're going to accelerate out of this. South Curly right with them there now. Karumba, nice turn. This is something they work on here, getting themselves away from this gate can. South Curly right there with them. Karumba Cockatoos, probably just a nose in front there. Mentioned before, boat captain Paul Davies. What a culture they have at the Karumba Club. It is absolutely fantastic. 25 crews. Dowkers was saying, as we come back across, we've got North Cronulla there on your right. Sorry, make that South Curly. North Cronulla on the left. And we go across to Port Kembla. Who have just gone bang and come right back into it. And you caught it. They knew that they were going to get back into it. 
And we're saying before that the South Kirk Earl Shakers, well, Gus Petiri, after winning the reserve female 10 minutes ago, he's going to try and do the double with the reserve female, but he's got to qualify first. At the moment, you caught it, Karaman Cockatoos on the right-hand side first. I think second will just be Port Kembler in front of North Cronulla Funkies, and South Kirk Earl are definitely right in it too. What a row from Port Kembler. I would have loved to have seen that boy turn that Jack Patterson did, because I reckon he's made up a boat length on the turn. Pretty hard to do in straight line speed. Swell's pumping up behind South Curley. They're going to have first crack at this. Are they going to be able to get over it, Aaron? No, they're not. Oh, Port Kembler. They have come from last position, and they are now going to join the crew from North Cronulla Funkies. And look what's happened to our leaders of 80% of the race. Karam and Cockatoos have missed us. So these crews are here. Port Kembler and North Cronulla Funkies are going to qualify for the oh, Aussie no, final. not it, again. It's a late takeoff for Karam and can they hold it straight? I don't think he can. He slewed it to the right. So it's going to be South Kirk who have also gone sideways too, but we just don't know where the line is. They've all stopped rowing. We'll wait and see, mate. Yeah, well, that's one for not giving up the, the chase there. Port Kembla, they had so much work to do after getting the worst of the starts. And they hung in and hung in. And they have come across the line in a qualifying position there. Along with North Cronulla Funkies, we will keep an eye on that crew right there, the Cockatoos. They were the winners of the ASRL Open a month or so ago, the Karum and Cockatoos. And that's twice now that they have led a race, only to get done from behind. And they got themselves in an awkward position there. Karum and Cockatoos getting chased down by that crew right there, South Curly. And we may be able to get Tash down on the beach. And let's see a confirmation on the reserve female results. So South Curl Curl, Curl Curl won it. Allura Wilco second. Morty Alec Mojo. What a story. What a story. Matty Molke has done it for Victoria with a bronze after just chipping away for the whole carnival. Avalon Beach Chaos in four. Noosa Heads Bowbirds fifth. Lawn Prawn six. Karum and Concords in seven. We are back with the open men here. We have Sean Stacey at the back of the North Curl Curl boat. Mentioned before, he already has two open men titles under the belt. If he can get off the beach with the crew beside him, to the right of him he has Bulleye Gold. Guns up. North Canala, Squidgy, Queensy, Coffs Harbour and Mermaid Beach and they're away. Great start. North Curl Curl, Gorgonites in alley number one. A few lines to deal with as they make their way out to sea. Six boats in this race and we are taking four through. And as just called, there's our field now. Have a look down that right hand end. Mermaid Beach, Kennard's off to a, bad, a good start. Sorry, in alley six. Coffs Harbour beside them. And the crew in alley four. That's Queensy. They've copped a bit over the bow. And in this sort of competition, that could be good night for Queensy. In Alley 3 there, that is North Cronulla, the Squidgies, and Bulleye Gold in Alley 2. They haven't got away as dominantly as they have in other races. Probably hard to tell from this angle. We have North Cronulla there, the Squidgies, on your left-hand side. And Queensy that copped a bit. Damien Daly at the back of that boat. as the skies get greyer and greyer here on the Sunshine Coast. Well, there's about three inches of water at our daughters down here as I went out there then. So the left-hand side, alley number two, Bulleye Gold. They'd be pushing it with Mermaid Beach Kennards in third place. Well, it's pretty tight. It's really tight. But Bulleye and Mermaid, as we called it, definitely two crews to watch leading into the next phase of racing. But look at Bulleye go, mate. Yeah, Bulleye, Shane Galovan, left-handed sweep. They will spin around. 
And I know in the Aussie titles in the final last year, they spoke about how they work getting away from the can. They feel that there is an advantage there to be taken as Bulleye angle in, nose on. Watch them spin around here. We are with North Cronulla now. They are going to turn as well. Sweep reaches forward, grabs a stroke or pulls it back towards him. Not right around though. They're going to row off on an angle. Let's get this to the right-hand side of them. Bulleye there. I think that they have got their nose in front. Mermaid down in alley six. Bit of spray coming off the bow there. That is Bulleye right there. So the condi conditions continue to change as we go through the afternoon. Bulleye's just having a look around. Shane's just looking over his left-hand shoulder as he's starting to hit his gait shortly. He'll just see it's cleaned up a little bit. It's almost gone offshore again. Yeah, it has. Wind spun around there again. And these guys will be rowing back into that wind here now. North Cronulla on your left, trying to get back into the picture here. Taking four through. Bulleye on your right. We saw what they did in that last race. Here's a little runner underneath them. They turned absolutely nothing into something. They're going to pick the rate, just skate along the top of that one. And we'll get the lengths out of that. But Mermaid Beach, I think across on your right-hand side, they've got to be in the top four as well. But party oh, time, party boy, time, party here we time, go. party time. Now, Bulleye are a wave of length ahead, sorry. So they should get ahead if they can get down this. The crew that's dropped off is North Kirkhill Gorgonites. They're out of it. The next one that's going to drop off is possibly North Cronulla Squidgy sitting on top along with Queen's the Open Men. Right-hand side, Coffs Harbour and Mermaid Beach are going to get over it on screen along with Bulleye Goal, and it's going to be between... Uh, North Cronulla and Queensy for fourth. Queensy here. They might have got themselves back into fourth position, a qualifying spot. And boy, I mentioned I thought they were out of it too. They copped a fair bit coming off the start there. Queenscliff, congratulations. That is a good row. That is a good comeback there from the Queenscliff boys. State champions in New South Wales, and why not? Six races to go. Thanks for joining us. We're having a bit of fun. Conditions have cleaned up. The rain's still hovering around. As we're moving into the next phase of racing, we'll await to get confirmation of that one. Let's go back to the open females and just make sure that the results are all good. Kurum and Cockatoos are the ones that miss out. So North Cronulla, South Kirkhill and Port Kembla make it through. Kurum and Cockatoos and Lawn Edge will be the two that miss out. You can say that surf boats doesn't make it any easier. The Cockatoos in a qualifying position. They need to have the wave gods not favour them there. And the other open female crews will be pretty happy about that. Run the Cockatoos. One of the form crews in open female racing this year. Current Australian team. And we've got Wilco on camera here now. Maddie in the stroke seat. Big Dan there, second stroke. Wanda Weapons in one, North Canala scraps in two. You just mentioned Don Wilco in three, Port Kembla four. The Barbarians from Carumban in five and continuing to chip away. Fairhaven Angry Otters in six. Yep, can't shake the Angry Otters. Awaiting a start. Six races to go. Seen some tight racing here. We've seen the waves become more and more of a factor. On screen there, the North Canola Scraps, as mentioned before, they've all had previous history in different crews in the clubs and they've come together, second year rowing together as a crew. Australian silver medalists. Beside them, Wanda. Silver medalists at the state titles, ASRL Open champs this year, and away they go. Wanda in and away. North Cronulla. These guys are super quick as. And great start, Fairhaven on the right hand side in alley number six. Now there's going to be one or maybe two waves for them to negotiate. Wanda here in alley number one. North Cronulla on their right hand side in two as they prop over this one and catch, and away they go. Yeah, Stroke just called them to come forward there, and they did, and the bow just popped up and over. Oh, the crew in alley three. Will go. Wilco copped a bit over the nose there. And it's pretty much a straight line, apart from Wilco copping a bit of a check there off the start in Alley 3. We're with Wilco there now. You can see the pumps on the left-hand side of his boat there, pumping the water out. It will be empty very quickly. But they've got some work to do. A couple of good motors sitting in the stroke seat there. 
the Allura crew knocked off Bulleye earlier today. They've got it in them. But they have got hot competition all around them here. And again, a bit of a straight line there, as I can't pick too many people jumping out in front here in our heat two of semi-final one of the open men's. Left to right, Wanda, North Cronulla, Allura Wilco, Port Kembler, as mentioned, Karumba, Barbarians, and Matt Silka with the Fairhaven Angry Otters in alley number six, 10 strokes from their turn, and it's definitely tight. Four are going to make it through to the major semi. Wanda and North Cronulla on screen here. Yeah, Wanda Weapons on your left there. Two boats from the Shire. The scraps with the stripy oars to their right. And again, anyone's race. Wanda Weapons in and around. Two strokes and away they go. Nathan, their, their sweep up the back there. It was a sick turn. That was solid. Straight yeah. back into it. Yeah, a little bit wide, but did not lose much boat speed there. Wanda Weapons. They're headed for home along with every other crew, mate. Once again, North Cronulla and Wanda are probably the two on the left-hand side leading. Allura Wilco have rowed right back into it, and we're already starting to see the runs come to play. Now there's a wave about to hit Port Kembla on screen. Karaman on the right-hand side, Fairhaven. This one they're not going to catch, but I reckon by the time they hit the gates, they'll be having a look around and lifting the rating. And even now, Don, right-hand side, Valley's four and five on screen. Yeah, nothing in this. Barbarians on your right-hand side there. Port Kembla on your left. Paul Kembler are going to scrape past their, their gate can. Oh, what's going on here? That's Wilco angling to try and chase a wave there. To his right, that's Paul Kembler. Wanda. Oh, Wanda. Alley one. And they're going to get over the front of that. Well, it doesn't matter if they do or yeah, they don't. They they're do. a mile Look, in front. Yeah, nice. Good work there from Wanda. Putting a stamp on that race. And, man, for the miners, here it is. We are taking four through. There's your winners, Wanda Weapons. But if we can scream onto the other... Boat crews, there they go. Down the other end, the right hand end seems to get the better run in there. Fairhaven just out of screen now. Corumban Barbars, there's Fairhaven now. Yep, he's caught him. Glenn Williams, a little bit of a fist pump there on the big barbarian, Glenn Williams. So the ones that will miss out will be North Canala Scraps. Great campaign. It's going to be between Allure and Port Campbell for fourth spot just off the naked eye. So we reckon Wanderer through Fairhaven and Crumman had the better run. So between Allure and Port Campbell, we'll wait to get confirmed results shortly. And uh, five to go. We're moving through nicely. Confirmed results from semi-final number one of the Open Mail. Mermaid first, Coffs Harbour second, Bulleye third. Queensy fourth, North Cronulla squidgy in fifth with North Curl Curl being knocked out of that one. As we're just continuing to check the results, let us know where you're watching. Join the conversation on the live stream, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. As we're moving into a final in a couple of minutes' time with the open female. So they'll start to get their boats set up. And you can see the Maruchidor boat moving down nicely. All the results on that. Yeah, we do. So we're moving into the final of the open female. We don't have a draw yet. So we, let's see that how This is go. on the line here now, mate. Just getting a little bit of uh, practice in. Oh, they might be rowing down from one to six. No. Just... Uh, Surely you don't need a practice start just before the race, mate, do you? I don't know. Brendan Weston. We can't. We, a little about. We, uh, they've made the final of an Aussies. They can uh, do what they want in preparation to get ready for the race. And uh, a bit of fun here with the towers. So they're going to be moving the towers. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh. Just like a frog in a pond. Down they went. One of our brave line judges taking the jump. So five races to go. It's nearing four o'clock. So stay with us as we've got another 45 minutes or so of racing. So we're going to finish it today. There's no doubt about that. Look after that camera. Yeah, don't worry about the bodies, mate. Yeah. You can always get another line judge. <laughs> oh, camera just taking a bit of a knock there. It is in a waterproof housing. I don't think they'd still want that spilling into the water. That is the work party for Alexandra Headlands. Tough gig there. T 
tide is coming in and they're going to move the finish line closer into the beach here as they are doing that the aussies is supported by the queensland government through tourism and events queensland be part of the action and discover your next queensland event at queensland.com events there's no place like queensland when it comes to combining australia's headline events with the most incredible destinations headline events mate brisbane 2032 It'll come up on us pretty quickly, mate. Olympic Games. Let's hope uh, I saw, a bit of uh, fun and games with the politics. I, I guess we'll steer clear of that. I saw the old Life Savings put their hand up. Surf Life Saving Australia in, conjun in conjunction with the, I uh, with the uh, ILS to get Life Saving in. So they're going to put in a bid for eight years' time. Surely be surf boats and not oh, the Iron Men. Exhibition event, surely. surely. We've got the New Zealanders. Who else did we get in there? Yeah, oh, plenty of countries rowing. We talk about the world titles. We've got South Africa coming to the world titles at Karawa in late August, early September. The European clubs. Yeah, the Poms are coming. And they row surf boats in Holland as well. Coastal rowing. I see they had one of their boats up the back of the racing area here over the last few days. So, yeah, just if you are with us, we've just got a course amendment. There's five races to go. Coming up next is the Open Females. So we were just mentioning partners. Let's see. We've mentioned the Sunshine Coast, which is great. BRP is the official Powercraft partner of Surf Life Saving, pairing volunteers with the best performance and the most sensitive products to the environment in the industry. Fins, the official swimwear of Surf Life Saving Australia, the quality performance swimwear brand, 100% Australian made, Kellogg's Nutrigain, Supporting Surf Life Saving Australia. Fuel the energy with the protein, fibre and energy. TFH Hire. Proud supporters of Surf Life Saving Australia with a family owned and operated company. And Ampol jumping on as well, mate. Along with DHL, Westpac, the Izuzu Ute and the D-Max and Westpac with a lifestyle event merchandise. On our running sheet here, mate, I'm a little bit confused. You might be able to help me out Oh, yeah, here. mate, what's going on? Mate, they've got the Open Women's Final coming up next. Yeah, I know, I saw that. And then after that, they've got the male second semi-final and then the male final. So well, we you might, would have thought... We might have to blabber for a few minutes while we wait for that break of the semis. But, uh, of you, course, the sponsor is on screen now. You're you would have thought that the Open semi-final would have been run prior to the Open Women's Final. That's not how it's appearing on our calendar. Let's go to the open men here and see if we can get a look at that second semi-final. Of course, we're just waiting for the course to be changed here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. And nothing up on the app for the open women's final or the second semi-final of the Open men. So I'm counting three races to go, mate. Well, we got the final of the Open women. We got the two semis oh, sorry, and of an the Open, open men's men. Final. Sorry. And an Open men final. Four races to go here. So we're just waiting. The tide is still coming in. The races will get longer as the minutes progress. It's five to four. Of course, we've just got some discussions going on the beach about what's going to happen next tash has run away from us probably at the beach bar they've got access to the beach here for about another 45 50 minutes before they have to be one and done which would i assume no boat relay that's done and dusted of course a big shout out to the production team of surf life saving australia for getting this coverage done throughout the event horrific conditions for part of today we got to live stream the moment of reflection we've seen medals given out to the reserve grade and under 23 already so just going through those results the gold medalist for the under 19 female yesterday was palm beach spencey got it done and the males south kirka which was a great way to finish yesterday absolutely going into the under 23s today south kirka taking out the males of course, Rob Lowey, mate, what a campaign he's had. Yeah, mate, and we, we've found Tash. She's down on the beach, mate, so we might just cross over to Tash. Go for it. Hey, you actually just caught me while I was having a little wee. I was going to the loo. Um, so in the background here, we've got our open female crews. Um, they are getting ready for their final. Um, so you can see Port Kembla here. Um, Jack Patterson sweeping the girls. And we've got Megsy behind them with Barucci door. So 
just trying to stay warm. Um, it's not too cold down here. Um, the rain's still falling, but um, the wind has dropped out a little bit. It's not as uh, strong as it was um, earlier today. So we've had a little um, shift of the finished towers as well. It was just getting quite deep for them. So they've just had to bring those finished towers in. Um, and then they'll just be looking to make sure that the video finish line cameras are all set properly, ready to go. Um, but yeah, aside from that, we are poised, um, ready for the open female final. So we know we're getting close to four o'clock. There's four races to go. How's the vibes down there going at the moment, knowing that time's starting to press? The, the vibe's not too bad. Um, there are plenty of people still, still down here on the beach. Um, we've been knocking through finals slowly all day and everyone's hanging around to watch the, uh, the big kids at it, the open men and the open females. So, um, yeah, I've just got a boat coming up behind the cameraman, so I'm just going to yep. move him out the way before we get run over. You've been watching there. the racing all day. You've got a prediction for the open female just to uh, join the conversation? Uh, can you repeat your question have there? You got, have you got a uh, prediction for the open female oh, coming up? Oh, prediction for the open females. Um, oh, it's been... Oh, you know... Come oh. on, come on. Get off the fence, Tash. I'm going to say... Uh, Marie Chidor. Oh, okay. There, there you go. go. I can hear the fanfare now, so there's the whistles. They are getting on the line now, so I'll cross back to you guys. Thank you very much. She's gone with the Marie Chidor chums. We are now going back to the final of the Open Female here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships in LA number one, North Penella Funkies in LA two, Port Kembler at OGs, and Marie Chidor chums in three, Bulleye Gold in four. South Kirkhill Shakers in five and Malulaba Chop Suey in alley number six. This is the final of the big one, the Open Female Championship of Australia. On screen there now, Michael Brooks. Plenty of racing for him today. North Cronulla Funkies, left hand side of your screen. Paul Kembler, husband and wife combination in the Paul Kembler boat. Jack Patterson, and what a proud moment for his wife captaining the New South Wales state team this year. There's a Port Kembla crew there now on screen. And they absolutely hung in. They were gone for all money in that last race. Emma, Shannon, Morgan and Renee, mate. Yeah, Renee being Jack's wife. And they hung in and hung in, and they've gone from last position to first position to get themselves here into the final. It was an amazing row. Next to them, Marichidor Chums. That's Tasha's call, Michael Brooks. And we've seen all these crews at some point in the last three or four races really push it for a win. We saw the Funkies of North Canala do some damage. South Kirkhill has been at the front. We know Bulleye Gold state team champions from New South Wales and we saw Malulabar chop Suri as well getting it done so any of these six can definitely win it it's it's a really really tight one to pick yeah I can't pick it if I've got to go out on a limb come mate yeah sorry I'm I'll, looking I'll, at all six I'll, 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 I've got I'll, a I'll go. ready we'll go on three one two three sentiment. Paul Kembler <laughs> oh. Malulabar Chop Suey are my sentimental favourites here, along with Marucci Dor. I guess that's a Queenslander in me. All right, mate. Have a bit of fun, of course, here on the live stream. Thanks to the Queensland uh, Tourism Events team and the Sunshine Coast. North Cronulla Funky on one. Port Kembler OGs in two. On screen, Malulabar Chums. Bulleye Gold in four. South Curl Curl Shakers in alley number five. Malulabar Chop Suey in six. Getting ready for a start here. The open female Aussie final. Let's get it done. Can Sarah Weston in the Malula Bar boat make it six open women titles? She currently has five. Three with her husband at Malula Bar and two with Northcliffe with Damien Claypan. And there is the line. The wind has dropped right out of this. Gun must be up. The girls look like they're ready to go here. Certainly check starter happy with the line. The sweeps won't be able to give it much of a push here as the tide has come back up. They can't run out along that sandbank pushing along. It'll be one or two steps for Michael Brooks there before he skittles into the back of the boat. So guns up now. You can see they all crouch down. Getting ready for a start here in the open female final of Australia. Guns up. You can see away they go. Marucci Dor on screen. Six in this one. Who's going to take out the gold? We'll know in three and a half minutes time. 
And away they go, crew there in Alley 3, Maruchidor Chums. Nice start from them. They are on camera here now. We are riding with them. What can they do? Disruptive season that they've had at the back end. Had an injury in the crew, and bang, they're going to bounce up and over that one. They just held off on that stroke. Oh, a bit of water in front oh, of the crew no. in Alley 1. North Cronulla Funk, he's copping it. Bulleye Gold got hit as well. So we're talking about the charms of Phoebe Sophie, Rachel Aaron. Oh, as... And again. And again. The Funkies. They know it. The stroke knows it. She lifts her head up. They call easy to go forward to catch at the back. And they're going to go up another one. Oh, that's hard. No boat speed whatsoever. The girls, look at them work there. They are ripping through on those oars. But have a look. They are, what, four boat lengths behind the leaders? Yeah, absolutely. And those leaders are the three that we've gone with. So Port Kembler on the left of that. The chums on the right of the screen. Maruch Malulabar, Chop Suey. Bring in the top three, as we can see on the right-hand side. Going back to South Kirk, Hill Shake is in four. Bulleye Gold and North Cronulla Funk is in six. But we've got three in a line at the moment. Malulaba, Port Kembla and the Chums. And we are looking at South Curley on your left-hand side there. And we've got Malulaba on your right. Malulaba in alley six. They've snuck out nicely there. That's a good bit of work from them earlier on in the race. We need to come back to alleys two and three. Port Kembla and Maruchidor. We pick those as being our three leading crews. And they're right up there. The chums are probably just a nose in front. But we saw what happened in the major semi-final. The Port Kembler OGs turned and came home with a wet sail. And they might want to look to do it again because they're just off the chums. But look at the right-hand side. Malulabar, they're your top three. South Kirk Curl in fourth, mate. Let's watch the turn closely. They go. Yeah, Maruchidor. They will spin it around really quickly. So will Port Kembler. They've spun around. Well, Maruchidor, they win the turn. Port Kembla, they've chased out. There's not much in it, though. I'm going to give that turn to Maruchidor. Malulabar third, South Kirk fourth. They're the four watching at the moment. Bulleye Gold in fifth and just turning now out of it, the Funkies. But these are the two crews on the right-hand side of the course, Malulabar and South Kirk yep. I can see 100 metres out to see. There's a couple of lines building, so we'll see what happens shortly. But it's Malulabar on the right-hand side. And the wind has really dropped off here now. I won't quite say it's glassy, but I'm coming back to Alley 2, Port Kembla. They're looking the goods here. The back half of their race in the semi was amazing. And they've been able to do it here again. They've put themselves in a position here. Marucci right door with them. Malulaba, Maruchidor, Port Kembla. They're the three we're watching at the moment. The Maruchidor force with Michael Brooks there. Just got their nose in front, hitting the gate cans. Port Kembla dropped off a little bit. And I think Malulaba have dropped two. And that means one thing. Maruchidor force are going for glory runner, now. Runner coming in underneath the Maruchidor crew here now. What can they do with this? They are absolute champions at chasing little waves. There's not much there. Michael's calling for it. Girls, give me something here. There is a gold medal in it for you. Nothing coming. Right-hand side, Malulaba. Right-hand side, Malulaba. They're sitting on one that'll go under them. It's got two to go now. Left-hand side, we've got Port Kembler and the chums there, the two leaders at the moment. Uh, Port Kembler and Maruchidor. Let's have a look here. Oh, where have the waves gone, well, mate? Nothing coming. South Kirkhill sitting on one. Bulleye Gold is sitting on one, two. It's Maruchidor, though, leading the way. Looking good so far. A little ripple there for Maruchidor. They're going to nose into the wave in front. Can they push themselves through this and over? They are pushing hard. Michael Brooks, keep an eye on him here now. Is he going to claim this? Yes, he is. Maruchidor chums. They are your open women champions. And aren't they loving this? Second, third in between Port Campbell, Bulleye and uh, South Kirkhill. And Malulabar there. I saw Malulabar might have slewed. And North Cronulla Funk here were pretty dirty about that one going out. But the double fist pump has done it once again. Corey Stone grabs hold of Michael Brooks there, the Queensland State Team Manager. He is a proud Queenslander and he would be stoked to see his club come over the line to take out the open women's. Natasha Tunney, she's got the touch. She picked it. And you know what they're so good about this crew, the Maruchador Chums? They went through the reserve grade a few years ago. They did their time and they progressed up. And now they've got an open women gold to celebrate for 2024. Phoebe Child, Sophie, Rachel and Aaron Smith. Congratulations to them. And then, of course, the silver medal. Well, that's up for grabs before Bulleye Gold came right through with Port Campbell and South Curl Curl also in the mix. We will be interested in our minor places here at the moment. Camera on our gold medalists. There is no doubt there, Michael Brooks, you little champion, you, and we've got Tash down there. We will throw to you now, Tash.
Okay, down here with the Marucci Door chums. I called it, boys. This was my uh, tip for the final, so they, they didn't believe in me. But um, anyway, girls, that was a fantastic race. That was really tight racing. It was sort of chopped and changed the lead a few times. You girls came home super strong there. What brought you home? I don't know. We're racing in our home beach and we've had two years worth of injuries and it's it's just, I don't know, us that brought it home. Yeah, you've had a couple of tough seasons. I know you did, uh, last us, who had a, Me. you had your foot broken, yeah. so coming back from injuries throughout the season. So, um, Megsy, you've won a few medals. What does this one mean? Uh, open, open's always the pinnacle of sports, so this is just unbelievable. So proud of them, so happy for them. Are all the family down here, guys, watching? Yeah, yeah pretty cool. Amazing, awesome. I'm going to let you go celebrate. Um, congratulations, you're the 2024 Aussies gold medalist for Open Females. <laughs> yeah, there they are, Maruchidor chums. There are some tears. <laughs> you got to love that. Absolutely, it means a lot, as we said. Throughout the coverage, these, these rowers train eight, nine, ten times a week. It's just remarkable that they fit it into their daily lives and it's also the commitments of being a surf lifesaver at your own club doing patrols and fundraising efforts. It's a huge, huge way to go all the way through to an open female final and give us that jump for Malcolm Trees. There you go. Couldn't happen to a nicer bloke. Michael Brooks, he is put back into our sport. He's been the president of the Australian Surf Rowers League. He's been on boat panels. He is a doer in our sport. And what you put in, you get paid back for. And he has won an open women's title. And as mentioned before, his mum, Karen Brooks, she will be one very proud mother. And Bob Stone, stepfather. Bob Stone, of course, life member of the ASRL. Next, he was a board paddler back in the earlier days. Came over into the boats. And what an impact he has had. So we're just awaiting confirmation of the results from that one. We're going to get the semi-finals up, mate, of the Open Mail. Eight to go here, so we've got three races of the Open Mail. We'll give you the results as soon as we know for those minor places of the Open Female. As we go to a replay, this might give us a better picture. Maruchidor there leading the way. Now we had... Right-hand side, Malulabar, Bulleye Gold in the middle, and left-hand side, Port Kembla. Geez, Malulabar looking good for the silver with Bulleye, I think. Yeah, not sure. Hard to tell from here. I'll keep refreshing on the app, mate, just to see if we can get those minor placings in the open female. Drake gets up to celebrate, and they'll be celebrating hard tonight for the next couple of days. And I do have the results here, mate. They have appeared on the app. And in sixth position is the North Cronulla Funkies in fifth. South Curl Curl Shakers in fourth position. Bulleye Gold. And in third position, winning of the bronze medal, Port Kembla. And in second position, winners of the silver medal, Malulabar Chop Suey. And, of course, our winners, Maruchidor Chums, on screen right there. So Malulabar... The Queensland is picking up the silver. Uh, my two sentimental favourites, the two Queenslanders, and they've done well. Of course, we are awaiting the start of the Open Male semi-final, the major semi-final. Of course, discussions here with the Sunshine Coast clubs. They've done the Quinella. Of course, living around the area. Port Kembla will be in alley number one. Kurumban Barbarians in two. Mermaid Beach Kennards in three. Coffs Harbour. The Schwackers keep getting it done. They're in alley number four for the Open Mail. Major semi-final. We've got three races to go. Three through. Out of the four, we are going to drop one as the Port Kembla girls come in and congratulate Malulaba and also Maruchidor. Phoebe Child there. Rightio. Let's well, do it. No rest for Jack Patterson. He's had to spin around and jump back in the boat again with his open men's crew. Australian team selected a couple of seasons ago, the Port Kembla men's crew. Our trusty flagman. He's had plenty of camera time today. Oh, the fan belt. Yeah, with their belt. Well, he yeah. knows that Collingwood have won, so he's a happy man at the moment. You might not know that. Alley 2, Corumban Barbarians, Glenn Williams, Mermaid Beach Kennards, and Gunn gets them away. 
the Mermaid Beach. Bit of flat water in front of them now as they wind it up. Don't they ever? Yeah, they've got something to hit at the back there. Coffs Harbour, not a bad start out of them as well. We are riding with the Corumban Barbarians here right now. Way for them. Oh, pop over. Yes, they do. That would take a bit of boat speed off their boat, though. And pretty straight line there. I think they've all copped equal punishment off the beach there. A couple of little checks for all of those crews. And we've got a straight line across the field here, as a Yeah, we do. Three are going to make it to the final of the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. And you're exactly right. They're all within a length. Left-hand side, Port Kembla, Corumban, Barbarians there. Of course, Glenn Williams there at the back of the boat. Marty Fletcher with the Mermaid Beach, Kennards. And uh, Matty Collins soft uh, with the Swackers. Coffs Harbour on screen there on the right-hand side with Mermaid in that boat on the left going through gates. And it's hard to take a boat length off your fellow crews in this sort of level of competition. There is opportunity at the start to get yourself away to a good start and advantage there. The next opportunity they're going to have is on the turn here. They're going to get themselves in. We mentioned Marty Fletcher doing the old school boy turn, slipping the sweep ball around behind him, getting into a left-handed position to give the boys a bit of advantage and slips the oar back around again to a right-handed position. Stay tuned on them as they get around the turn. And you just mentioned it. There's certain components of the race that you really got to nail, and there's certain components where you can get a half length and extra length. Obviously, one is the start and your surf work, but one is right here, the turn. And if you can do it in that one or two strokes that we're seeing, you can get the advantage on the way out. One stroke there, and they are rowing again. So there's a one-stroke turn out of Port Kembla. They come a little bit wider, but they don't drop any boat speed here. And look at that, four boats all spun around, all on their way home now. Possibly Mermaid there in Alley 3. We've got the camera on them now. Little runner coming underneath there. Boy, geez, they make these boats move, don't they? Yeah, Have a look they... at the bow wave coming off them. Yeah, left-hand side. We can see two or three runs that we've seen for the uh, crew from Port Kembla on the left. On screen there, Coffs Harbour, Matty Collins. What are we saying to them barking orders, hey? Oh, you could hear him from up in the grandstands, that's for sure. Well, he's not out of this. He's on a little run here, and there's another one coming for everyone. So this is definitely hot. There's one length between the four crews, left-hand side. Port Kembla, Corumban Barbarians, Glenn Williams sweeping there on the right-hand side, but they're just going up and down at the moment with the swells, and there's another one now. Mermaid might have got their nose just in front here on the way home. Corumban, oh, they're going to run onto that. Yeah, he's going to have to keep chasing this one because it's not there. It is not there yet for them. They need to keep chasing here. They've gone past Mermaid, though. The crew that have the work to do is going to be the crew on the right-hand side of Coffs Harbour, but there's a wave under them now. It might be too late, though, because I think the three crews on the left-hand side are a wave ahead, and we're looking at Port Kembla, Corumban, and Mermaid Beach Kennards for the final of the Open Male Champs of Australia. There's your three qualifiers there. Great campaign from Coffs Harbour over on your right-hand side. They have done extremely well. Great work being done up there. Scotty, one of the members there, ASRL Vice President, and the rude man, Matty Collins, Jack Patterson. There'd be a few choice words said to the boys then. One to go, boys. Yeah, what one do you reckon? Ring-a-ding-ding, what do you reckon about that, boys? Marty Fletcher makes another final, of course, on the national stage. The, the, the familiar sweeps that we see time and time again know how to get it done. And talking about a familiar sweep, we've got one or two or even three coming up in the next one. In fact, all of them. Nathan Spinner will be sweeping the Wonder Weapons in one. Matt Silker will be sweeping Fairhaven Angry Otters in two. Of course, Shane with the Bull Eye Gold in three. Damien Daly, Queensy, Open Men in alley number four coming up. Yep, second semi final there, and there is going to be a bloody good crew miss out here, mate. They're going to drop one, and they are all deserving of being in the final. These crews have all shown exceptional form. And Matt Silka will not want this to be his last last race in Fairhaven or Victorian colours. We know he's going to be up in Queensland from next season and beyond. He's already living up there. He's been living up here since uh, January, been flying back and forth to Victoria to finish the season off with his three or four crews. And he's got one here, the Angry Otters. Yeah, house husband these days, Matty Solka. His wife has moved up here for work purposes. And he is a house husband. Now you can see Bulleye Gold just about a quarter of a length back from the others. Probably, obviously, Shane knows what he's doing. Just fraction back. Yeah. And away they go. He's not phased by that at all. All crews cleanly away. 
Wander on the left, Fairhaven, Bullite and Queensy. And don't they rate it up, these A-grade crews, as they whip it off the start here. Wander, we are riding with them here. And they're going up and over, and they are out into clear water now, uh, Wander. Well, the ones that are already dropping off a little bit is the Queensland crew on the right-hand side. So Wander, Fairhaven and Bullite got the best of the start. They're all the way now. He's having a look to the right to see that he's right up there, if not leading the way. Can't believe these conditions. It's absolutely glassed off here at Alexandra Headlines, Headlands. The sky is grey. The wind is slightly offshore. And we've got some pretty good conditions here for some fair surf boat racing. We're looking to take three through here. Shane Galove and the Bulleye crew on camera here now. They are back-to-back -back current Australian champions looking for their third final and looking for their third gold medal. And looking good at it at the moment. Paul Kemble, Karamba and Mermaid Beach are already in the open mail final. This is the second last race of the day. The semi-final number two with Wanda Bullo on screen. Fairhaven coming into the picture. And on the right-hand side is Queenscliff open man, probably half a length behind Fairhaven at the moment. But as that tide starts to hit high tide at the moment, it's a long race, and we're seeing that at the moment. Wander and Bulleye, two of the powerful open men crews we've seen all season. Wander got one up on them at the ASL Open, but let's see what happens here as they get into the final later on this afternoon. No mistakes here for the leading crews. They're going to want to whip around here, and the two leading crews are going to want to maintain their advantage. And here, Wander weapons, we go over the top of them. No, we don't. They spin it around here, and they're away. And they've probably got the best of the turns there. Bulleye around with them. And Bulleye just accelerates so quickly out of that turn. You can see them down there, top of your screen. They'll accelerate away. But so did Wanda, riding with them there. Little runner for Wanda. And those two leading crews might have put another boat length or so. Oh, have a look at the run here. It's like these boats have got a motor on them. In these conditions, on this flat water, you are not catching Bulleye or Wanda when you're a length and a half behind like Fairhaven and Queenscliff are right now. So all they've got to do is focus on their own blade and try and beat each other up as they're right next to each other for equal third. And Wanda. the young blokes, the young blokes from Wanda, opportunity here to get themselves into an Aussie final. Current ASRL champs. Little runner up behind him here as a minute to go for this one, and then we're going to have a final later on. You can see little runs coming. Queenscliff have gone past Fairhaven, but Fairhaven start to lift in the white boat. Bottom of screen, Wanda Fairhaven. Then you got Bulleye there on screen on the right hand side. Queenscliff, I don't think they're going to catch Bulleye and Wanda, but let's see what happens for third. Oh, and let's wait. see what happens on this wave. Four on the way, commentators curse. Here we go. Oh, Fairhaven, Queasy. let her run. Momentum from Fairhaven as you see the white boat slip through here. Oh, We're taking three through. It's clapping to Queenslip again. We may have them. Wow. Yep. Now they've all got to hold it. They've got two lengths to go and they're going to make it through. So unfortunately for Queenscliff, they miss out. But Fairhaven have made the final of the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships with Bull and Wanda. What a semi final. Unfortunate for Damien Daly and his lads. New South Wales State Champions miss out here. They will not go through to the final. But Matty Solka will have his last race in Victorian colours for a while. He would love nothing better than to hang a gold medal. He already has one in the Masters division here, but that will mean nothing compared to what he's about to line up in for in the next 10, 15 minutes. That will give these A-grade crews a bit of a break here. So let's start to work through the list. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's talk about the Barbarians from Karuman. First up, Glenn Williams, Jock Kent, Sampson. Mick Tavish and Jared Bidwell there in the crew as well. Yeah, Glenn Williams, he knows how to row. He was on the podium back in 2002 in row rowing in an open crew. He has won a couple of gold medals. I might just go to my notes here, mate, just to tell you when they were. And while you're at it, Mermaid Beach will be in this. Marty Fletcher, Fergus Cummins, Murray, Jake Weston, and Nicholas Winkler there also for that crew, the Mermaid Beach Kennards. Do not leave us. We've got one more race to go. It's the Open Rail final here of Australia. So they'll give them a breather for 10 or 15 minutes. We're not going to leave the coverage. We're just getting our notes ready. To bring this one home. And just repeating... The results we've had so far, the under-19 male and females were won by South Kilkel and Palm Beach. So congratulations to those crews that finished it earlier on today. Uh, sorry, 
earlier on yesterday, I should say. Northcliffe Lightning getting it done for Damien Clayton's 12th Aussie gold. In the under 23 males, it was South Curl Curl. The reserve females was won earlier on today by South Curl 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 Curl. In the reserve male one earlier on today by North Cronulla Boss in an amazing row. The open females, Marichidor, the chums from up the road. And we'll bring in a decent preview for this in a minute or so time. Have you found your notes? Yeah, struggling. Got well, back to uh, 2015 here for Corumban to win with Lyle Clark. I'm assuming that Glenn Williams was stroking that crew. 2015 in Chugan, Corumban. And then I have a guess he might have been in the Coolum crew of 1999 at Karawa with Grub Grant. Don't hold me to that one. So don't leave us. We're about to have the open male final in about 10 minutes' time. So Bulleye Gold, let's talk about them. We've got Shane the Sweep, Heath and Kyle Mercer, Dean Roberts, and Fraser Worthington once again. Yep, they are the current Australian team. Absolute gentlemen too. Really nice guys. Had a bit to do with them this year. That's the second time they've been in the Australian team. They are back-to-back Australian gold medalists and can they join the legends of Warrywood, North Cottesloe and Mona Vale to win three on the trot. Skidder, Thomas Skidmore and Matt Silker there sweeping the angry otters. Victorian state team reps, Victorian state champions have troubled a lot. I know there's a few young kids in that in that uh, crew now, so they've just started to slow it down a little bit. But once again, an open male. And of course, Mez Baker, married to one of the Baker boys, snagged a bronze earlier with the Morty Alec Mojo. So let's see if I can take home two medals here from the Aussies. Then we go to Port Kembla, Mitch Ferran. There he is there on screen, Mitchie. Hey. Spent a bit of time at Bill Gola with, with uh, God himself. Don McManus, and he's found this. He's still living on the northern beaches, travels down to train with the boys at Port Kembla. Australian team from a season ago, and one of the brothers there. Oh, there's Tash. Just he's quickly joined by Mitch Hogan, Aaron Jackson, Corey Jackson, and the sweep, of course, of Patterson. And we'll throw it down to Tash, who's giving us a thumbs up. Yeah, hi guys, how are you going? I'm down here with the uh, Wonder Girls. Uh, what's your crew name? Um, we are the Wonder Whales. <laughs> and what division are you racing in? Under 19. So how many seasons have you had? One, this is our first. Yeah. How did you go? Um, <laughs> we got knocked out in the repertoire. Yeah. It's pretty cutthroat when you've got a repertoire. Yeah. It's a little brutal. Yeah. Um, it's not very forgiving. So, um, you know, don't be sort of disappointed that you didn't get through. I've been there before. Um, but what are your ages? I'm 16. I'm 16. 16. So you're all 16 first season. Who's sweeping your girls? I'm Nathan. Oh, Spinner. You've got a good sweep. That's pretty good. Nice. What's he like as a coach? Um, he's really good. Uh, yeah, he's really good. Okay. Um, did your girls come down to lawn this year? No. Oh, why not? Uh, oh. Come on, us South Australians have to travel all the time for every event. So... Uh, my little 19 girls, they made the trip over, so they um 15 and 16 like yourself, so um, you should have come down. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so what, what, what have you loved most about getting into surf boats? Um, well, making these friends and kind of just being a community, like each day being a wonder. Like it's so fun watching the open men and everyone compete and yeah, pretty cool to cheer them on. Yeah, the Wonder boys have worried well this season too, they've had a pretty good season. Um, so for you girls, did you come through nippers or were you late to surf? Um, I got these two from school. Um, one of my friend's mum goes to like the reserve women and she asked me to come to the training session. <laughs> um, so girls, you're planning on coming back next season? Absolutely. Are you going to get to the ASRL Open? Even if it's outside of New South Wales. 
we've got little baby spinning here. Hello. Uh, how's Dad going sweeping? Oh, good. Yeah. It's not too bad. Um, all right, girls. We are just we're having a little bit of a break at the moment, so the boys can rest the legs. Um, good job coming down and rowing. It's a um, you know a great thing to be a part of. Um, have you been out in any big surf? Uh, we had a big surf. Yeah, I two or three. Yeah, and a few training sessions. Okay, well, great job, girls. Good to see you here getting amongst it and enjoying it. Um, and we'll see you next season. Fantastic, girls. Okay, back to you, boys. Oh, we've lost it. We've lost Tash, and she was about to get put on the spot again. I love that interview. The first thing they say when they're asked why they in surf boats, what the best thing about it, and it was making friends. Yeah. I love that. 30 under 19 female crews here. I've just got a correction to make, of course. I was blowing uh, smoke up. Mez Baker, who, of course, did not fill in for Morty Alex. She, she filled in for Lawn. I think nine hours in the 30 degree dong has gone to my head. So uh, she actually definitely filled in for the Lawn Prawns. So we're going to go back to focus on the open male final we're just waiting for a draw we've got to give them a bit of a breather we've got 13 minutes on the clock till we finish so they're probably just gonna wait a few more minutes of course thank you for watching us wherever you've watched us around australia the world we've had comments recently from south africa we've had a bit of back and forth with a couple of comments from canada and the usa we're just waiting for a start once again repeating one more race to go at the australian surf life saving champs port kembla Corumban barbarians mermaid beach kennards wonder weapons fairhaven angry otters and bull eye gold are your six finalists here at the aussies in the open mail mate let's continue to go through the preview wonder weapons matthew bradley jack spooner hayden ward and nathan spinner Huge campaign they've had this season. Winning the ASRL, silver at state. Making the final with brilliant pace. We saw what they did in the major semi-final, putting their foot down and getting a, an epic runner. Of course, you can see a beautiful shot. What rain are we talking about? Picturesque conditions here for the last race of the day. The sun is out, the surf is clean. Yeah, and I've just got a message here, just talking about people that are watching on the live stream Jack Ellis, North Cottesloe, and don't you love a corrector again? I mentioned North Cottesloe J Crew had won three in a row. He's corrected me and said <laughs> it was four titles in a row. And I love he says just a little correction. Don't yeah, don't that's right. <laughs> yeah. Good but on you, mate. Thanks for the uh, thanks for that one. Most people are happy with one gold medal. Most it's people are happy to make a final. Absolutely. At one stage, yeah, I was happy just to roll on the Sunday, and there are the Corumban or one of the Wolfings there couple of characters there from the Corumban Surf Club. The Barbarians, Jared McTavish, Samson Hatfield, Jock Kent, with Glenn Williams sweeping Fairhaven Angry Otters. We mentioned the Baker boys, Matt Jeffrey, Tom Skidmore, Bulleye, Shane with the Mercer boys, Heath and Cole, Dean Roberts, Fraser Worthington, Mermaid, Fergus Cummins, Marty Fletcher, Murray, Stacey, Jack Weston, Nicholas Winkler, Paul Kembler, Mitch Ferran, then you got Hogan, the Jackson boys of Aaron and Corey, Jack Patterson there, and the rounded out wonder that we just mentioned. Getting ready, staying warm. Probably five or six minutes to go would be my tip. Mermaid just warming up there. What have they got left in the legs here today, these open men's crews? Murray Stacey on your right hand side there. I saw him wheeling the pram down onto the beach a little bit earlier there. And his gorgeous wife and baby up here in support. And there's the bar we've been talking about. Give, us, getting... a, well, give us a wave if you can hear us. It's absolutely packed. I think, mate, me and you will be there in about 20 minutes of time to oh. uh, get some fresh air after sitting in here all day. <laughs> Not fun in the donga for nine and a half oh, hours, mate. mate. Absolutely, but we'll be up there soon. Looking forward to it. Bit of a wedge oh. there, mate. That's how we love it. And, Something uh, for the camera. Well, most importantly, he just shows that the nerves aren't getting to him. He's embracing it. 
Roman Barbarians on the screen there. And what we'll see in about a minute's time, I think the uh, Viking clap will start. We'll probably hear it from here. Look at the size of that wander tent. And they're going into the water. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final of the Open Male Championship of Australia. We're just getting the, the uh, draw up now between the both of us. And uh, we're going in without it, but we can make do. No worries about that because we can see that the red boat of Marty Fletcher and the guys here, the Chipman, the Kennards higher. Here we go, bottom of screen. We got Corumban in one. Mermaid Beach Kennards in two, Wanda Weapons in three, Port Kembla in four, Fairhaven Angry Otters in five, and Bulleye Gold in alley six. There's the Corumban. Wait for the Viking clap. It will happen. Of course, you can see there's six pockets of supporters along the beach. A whole of Victoria will be behind Fairhaven, that's for sure. Good light here on Alexandra Headlands Beach. 4.30, we are just going to squeeze this in to the time slot that we are allowed to be on the water. And I'll tell you what, you strap yourself in for three to three and a half minutes of action because these boats will absolutely hum as they make their way out to sea and turn and come back. So you've got about 350, 400 metres of rowing, make the turn and back in. The beach is packed. What a beautiful sight here at Alexander Headlands, all thanks to the Queensland Tourism and Events Queensland and the sunny coast. Let's get it going. Flags up, Don. Not far from the start. No, bottom of your screen, Corumban Barbarians. Mermaid there next on your screen. Wanda Weapons next to them. Port Kembla in the black boat. The white boat second from the top of your screen. Fairhaven and Bulleye Gold. Great shot. Not far away from the start. Bulleye and Wanda, two crews to obviously watch. We've seen what they've done, but anyone can win this. Anyone can win it, and away they go. Wanda, one of the favourites on screen. Clean start. A little bit of timing out there at the start for the Wanda crew, but they have muscled into this. Mermaid Beach away strongly as well. Bottom of your screen, as said before, Barbarians. They've copped a little chip there. Just dropped them back. A nose. Oh, water coming. And so are Bulleye going up and down too. So Fairhaven are leading the way. They all get oh. hit. Waves hitting the crews there. Let's see who came out of the best of that one. Mermaid on screen there by the looks of things. And it is Mermaid in alley two. They look like they're there. But pretty much a straight line amongst the rest of them. Glassy conditions here. Bull Not... Sorry, mate. Bull line Fairhaven in alleys five and six are right up there with Mermaid. They're your top three at the moment. You'll see Wander in fourth. Not too far away would be... The crew at the bottom of the screen, Karamid, but they're making their way out, mate. Mermaid and Bulleye. Yeah, Mermaid might have had their noses out in front here. Marty Fletcher crouching down as they head through the gate cans there. Wanda Weapons next to them. And it is on here, Mermaid Beach. We are riding with them now. Marty Fletcher crouching down. He talks calmly to the crew. He doesn't get too excited, doesn't get up him in a race. He will be saying to them, we have got our noses in front here. This is opportunity. And I'm hoping he's not thinking a couple of years ago where he missed the gate can. Oh, I did too. Yeah. But don't worry about that. That's in the past. Fergus Murray, Jake, Nick, along with a ride with Marty Fletcher there. They're just in front, but you know what's going to happen at the top of screen because every single stroke pull I gold take, they're going to gain. And that's going to happen as they go into the turn. Two or three strokes into it. How close is this? Yeah, Mermaid Beach hit on it, nose behind Bulleye. Around they go. One, two strokes. The stroke sits back down again. And don't know if they'll be overly happy with that turn. They are around and square to the beach and away now. Bulleye down in alley six. You can see them. Look at the work Bulleye do out of this can. Mermaid going with them. Wanda look like they're in third position here. Corumban with the work to do at the bottom of the screen. And Little Runners coming here. Absolutely. The next minute is critical. Can Bulleye go back to back to back? They've got to catch one boat at the moment. And that's Mermaid Beach. And they're extending with that little run that they just had. And now you're going to see that these open men, Don, they can catch anything. And it's still Mermaids for the taking. Can another Mermaid run. Do it? Another run there. Mermaid, they bring the raid up. They're going to drop off the back into the hole now. And he's going to ask them to dig me out out of this hole here dig me out there is another little run here for me can we take it as they come back through the gate cans there bulleye top of screen yeah absolutely it's between bulleye and mermaid at the moment wander are pressing two let's see what these three crews can do and also port kembler working into a run now they're going to hit the wave zone shortly port kembler fall off the back which means it's up to mermaid and they're going to drop off and now watch bulleye go oh bulleye working this run and none of them are going to get it here we have got our leading boats there is bulleye there is nothing much for these crews 
shoes. The wave gods are going to come into it here. Mermaid bottom of the screen, bull eye top of the screen, wander in second position. There's nothing work. Oh, here we go, Mermaid. Little runner there for Mermaid and Bull Eye down the other end. It's between the two and Bull Eye and Mermaid here for the Open Male Championship of Australia. Bull Eye and Mermaid, we've got them on screen. Who's going to do it? Five strokes to go. Wanderer are going to get third, but who's going to win it? Bull Eye or Mermaid? They're almost at the line now, and we're going to have to wait to see who gets it. Wanderer are going to get third, fourth place at this stage. Fairhaven, Karaman, and Port Kembla right there as well. Oh. Wowee, mate. Great call, Don. I'm liking the look of Bulleye down there in Alley 6. We don't quite know the angle of the stands and the finishing line where it was. But wow, what a race. Wanda third, definitely. Karumban were right up there. Fairhaven fourth, I reckon, as well. So a fantastic campaign. But you look to see the blokes when they get out of the boat. Three and a half minutes of absolute torture. The season's over, but we got a photo finish between Bulleye and Mermaid on screen. They went hammer and tongs. You see that there was a lead for one, then it went back to the other, then Mermaid got the run, and then it dropped off. Just wasn't anything there to really push a boat out in front of the other at the end there. They were just working on not much at all. Our two leading crews, Bulleye, they are hugging one another. I think they might have got it. Shane Galovan, the Jackson brothers there. Sorry, make that the Mercer brothers. Heath, Kyle, Dean Roberts, and Fraser. What have we got, Tash? Can't quite hear us there, Tash, on the beach. Go for it. Yeah. We're just down here on the beach. Um, we are going to the video finish just to check and confirm. Um, it has been called as bulleye, but they do want to go to video just for that final confirmation. So give me a couple of seconds. We'll just uh, double check with the referees and make sure it's the all clear, and then we'll head down and grab that interview. All right. So we'll catch you in a second. Thank you very much for the update. An interim result of Bulleye, but we're just waiting to see on the video. Of course, that was pretty close. It was within half a length. So Mermaid, mate, they turn, went away, and Bulleye just went, hey, how you going? Yeah. Don't forget about just, us. Just wore them down at the end there. Bulleye, you can see them there, top of the screen. We think they've just done three in a row, has Bulleye. The Australian team, the cream rises to the top. And those two crews going stroke for stroke. And it just came down. I don't know whether Bulleye just had a little bit better run. You see the bow of Mermaid coming up a bit there. They didn't have much. They drop into the hole there. They try to dig it out. Here was their this opportunity. The yeah, there was their opportunity. And Bulleye down the other end. They were running as well. And they just kept pushing out in front of that wave. Mermaid getting sucked back a little bit there. The yeah, better, wow. Just the better run of it. In fact, as you say, though, Bulleye rowing in front of that swell, so they actually almost didn't let him catch it. If not, they rowed away. So how yeah. tight's that? Wanda, you can see in third. I'll be leaning towards Fairhaven. Equal with uh, Karaman for fourth and fifth. Toss a coin and then going back to Port Kembla. But what a finish we had here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Champs. We won't leave the coverage till we get the confirmed result. Waiting for confirmation. As we can see, there's a crowd starting to build at the bulleye end. Build at the bulleye end of the race. They've gone to the technology which has been developed by the ASRL over a number of years, the finish line technology. There is a line on a screen and the donger up the back and it will clearly show the bows of the boat coming over the line. We see the open men's crews shaking hands, walking up and down the beach congratulating one another. But there is a bit of a crowd gathering around the Bulleye crew there now. And there's a certain man in there that's lurking called Malcolm Trees, and you know <laughs> when uh, there's a result pending or looking their way, he'll be getting ready for it. But Yeah, that's one of the Mercers there. There's hugs all round. Memories of last year. There is Boff from North Cronulla. He would have gone down and shaken the hand of Shane Galovan, the sweep. Massive hugs there. The Mercers, Heath and Cole, Dean Roberts, Fraser Worthington. Yeah. Good stuff. One of the Jackson twins from Bull Eye, uh, from Paul Kembler with his daughter there. Great stuff. And the other Mercer uh, with the moustache. And the shot there as well. There he is. The Mercer brothers. Lost their father some 18 months ago, tragically. He was out rowing in a surf boat. And there would be smiles all around. What a great achievement. 
and Tashira lurking that way as soon as you got the all clear take it away and we'll throw down Tash give us an update if you can we'll still be waiting for confirmation we think we've got our winners here a bit of an empty feeling mate not being able to jump up and down and call yeah. and say who the winner is we're pretty sure it's bull eye all right let's go down to tash she's got news we're gonna just bring it this way i'm gonna get these bull eye boys to join me in a second I'm trying to uh, bring them just down the beach it's with me right, so that we can get it's reception. It's not their first rodeo. They know what they're doing. They'll, uh, they'll make their way down here. But a phenomenal racer in open males. Um, very, very close between um, Bulleye. And uh, they fortunately managed to get that win. Super, super tight finish there. So we're just getting them to walk down the beach here and to join us. Um, there's a few children in tow as well. Rumban A crew rowers there just congratulating them. <laughs> Marty Fletcher, we think he's got the silver medal, shaking hands with Shane Galovin. Hello. Like herding cats there, Tash. Right here, Tash, take it away. <laughs> okay. Yep. All right, we are down here. We've got Bulleye Gold here. 2024 Aussies Open medalist for the Open Male Final, boys. That was an epic race. It was very, very close. Uh, and how many back-to-back -back is this? Uh, it's just three in a row for us. Um, three, yeah. Yeah, so, so we, just, we work hard. We're good mates. We just try hard and have fun. So it's good. Yeah. Amazing. So, um, there's a few extras here this year that have joined the crew. Who have we got? Yeah, so this is little Billy, and then we got Nate and little Louie over there. So, <laughs> it's good. a little bit different to last year. There's a few few additions, so you boys have been busy in the off season. <laughs> Maybe a little quieter celebration, but we still have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how do you guys just keep, I don't know, backing up and, and doing what you do? Like, how do you, you know, just manage to pull one out every time? Oh, it's just a lot of hard work. We just hurt ourselves as much as possible every training session. There's never really any light sessions, so just sort of count on all of those sessions today. Yeah. Um, the conditions today, Shane, they were all over the place. There was winners coming from everywhere. What were you sort of thinking going into the race with the conditions? What were you planning? Well, it worked, played into my hands. I got last pick, so that was the alley I was going to get. And uh, I said, boys, we can win from here. Let's go and do it. Yeah. And we just showed everyone. Okay, guys, go celebrate. Um, congratulations. Amazing way to finish off Aussies. Fantastic. And I'll tell you what, Don, there's one way to do it. I know with a young family myself, the time commitment that's needed into this sport is just insane. And for them to do it with so many young kids and families involved, it's a credit to them to go back to back to back. Oh, and they need the support of their wives, their whole family. You can't do that on your own. They've got tremendous backing. They've dominated for a decade or so. Now there's three in a row. And what a way to do it. That was hard fought, and they got their nose in front and just pushed themselves over the line there. Well, it's been a slog in here. It's quarter to five. We've had a huge day. We've got to thank the officials for getting through the program because we know tomorrow's going to be a bit of a write-off. So on behalf of Surf Life, Surf Life Saving Australia, I'd like to thank our partners, Tourism and Events Queensland, the Sunny Coast, BRP, Finns, Kellogg, TFH Hire with Ampol and DHL National Partners, Izuzu, Westpac, Lifestyle Event Merchandise for their support. And we, as we can see, a few highlights from the past few days. And, uh, mate, what a sport. Over 400 crews here combined between Masters and the Opens and the Youth. It was an amazing uh, three, well, five or so days of racing, and they finally got through it in tricky conditions. Yeah, absolutely they did. As we see the highlights of our winners here, we need to thank all of our officials as well. They've done a great job to get this done. Weather not meant to be great tomorrow. They've pushed it through. They've got all of the medals given out. Yeah, so we're just going to continue to see some highlights. That was a reserve men.
boffs that got it done there. And then we can see the reserve women of South Curl, 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 Curl getting a gold in front of Allura Wilco behind them. South Curl, Curl with three gold medals in the, of the eight of the Opens and there's a Masters medal as well. That makes it four. Yeah, incredible effort there by the South Curly Club. And there we go. Fist pump moment for sure. Yeah, good stuff. I love the emotion of these gold medalists. It means so much. You train so hard. It is such reward. And there we have South Curly, Gus Pateri and his crew. Curly, Curly. And a big thank you to the production team who made everything happen, of course, bringing the stream forward one day is an incredible feat. Getting everything done and sorted in a short time frame. And just talking about another marvellous win. Two hands up for Michael Brooks in the open female, the chums. We've seen them win at the national level before at the reserve grade level, and they've done it for the opens here. Yeah, winners previously in under 23s. That's right. And Michael Brooks savouring the moment. Good stuff, Brooksy. Of course, there'd be a fair few supporters from up the road here. And of course, this was the last one of the day, the Open men. Great start for everyone there. But you see, even Bulleye, if we keep running with this, they got a couple of hits there at the top of the screen, but it didn't slow them down. They were always in the top two. So you've gone over one there. Then they had one more here as well that checked them. And they still just kept on going away. They just motor, don't they? The V8s of our sport. And then coming home once again, just check this out. Mermaid won't want to watch it because they know how close they were. Wanda third, Fairhaven, Caramon and Port Kembla rounding it out. But as you can see, Mermaid were on the wave and Bulleye just stayed ahead of it at the top of the screen. Yeah, just being able to push themselves out in front there. The Bulleye crew, angle of the beach, line of the wave. Mermaid just sort of nosing in a little bit there, not getting the run home that the Bulleye crew did. So we'll look to wrap it up now. Thank you very much for joining the stream. Of course, a family shot there. Kids involved, back to back to back. Bulleye Gold on behalf of Surf Life Saving Australia and everyone involved with the stream. Don, we've had a great day. Jace Bean, Phil Savano joined us as well. Natasha Tunney on the beach. A beautiful shot there of Alexander Headlands. Once again, let's go over a bit of fun. It's been a long day, mate. Thanks Absolutely. for joining me. Cheers, mate. Thanks for your commentary all day. Good on you. Thank you very much for watching here. Of course, thanks to Queensland Tourism and Events. It's bye for now.